Do you need an e-commerce website? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to build one easier than ever using WordPress and WooCommerce. Here's everything we're gonna cover. How to get your very own custom domain name and hosting for your website, which is basically just getting a .com and then connecting your website to the internet. Next, how to download and customize a pre-built store to save a ton of time and effort. Then I'm gonna show you guys how to edit that pre-built store with Elementor, which is a really easy to use drag and drop page builder that lets you edit a website like this instead of like this. Next, I'm gonna show you guys how to create six different products. So we've got the simple product, which is simply a product with no fancy options. You just buy it as is. A variable product, which is a product with different variations like size and color. A digital product, which is like a webinar or a Zoom session. A downloadable product, which is just a product that gets downloaded immediately after purchase. An affiliate product, which is just promoting someone else's product and then just making a commission on the sale. And finally, a grouped product, which is just a bundle of a bunch of your different products on your website all in one. After that, I'm gonna show you guys how to set prices and sales, track inventory, create categories and tags, and also how to upload product images. I'm even gonna show you guys how to create your very own logo completely for free. I'll go over shipping methods and shipping charges, as well as how to do coupon codes like 20% off and free shipping. And then I'll even show you guys how to set up your payment methods so you can get paid with credit card and PayPal. Lastly, I'm gonna show you guys how to manage your orders to keep your customers up to date on everything like confirmations and shipping times. Now I'm also gonna leave timestamps of this video down in the description so that you guys can skip around to whatever part you might need. So be sure to check out the timestamps. We are only gonna be using free tools to build this website for the entire tutorial, so don't you worry. The only thing that you have to purchase is your domain name and web hosting, but that's already something that you have to purchase no matter what if you wanna build a website. Speaking of getting a domain name and web hosting, let's just go ahead and jump right into step number one, which is to get your domain name and web hosting. Like I just said, in order to make a website actually function, you have to have two things. You have to have a domain name and you have to get web hosting. It's the same thing as getting a phone number and service with Verizon or any other provider that you try to get. Web hosting is like signing up for that service, and then a domain name is like the phone number you get. So in order to get your domain name and hosting with a massive discount, just click on the very first link that's down in the description, or you can go to creativeprowebsite.com slash hostinger, and it'll take you to our special co-branded landing page. Now this affiliate link compensates us for making this video, but it also provides you with the absolute lowest price for your hosting plan. It takes off like $100 from your bill. Once you're here, you're just gonna scroll on down and you'll see the three different plans that they have available. We've got the single, the premium, in the business plan. I always recommend the premium web hosting plan because you get so much included with it. Most importantly, a free domain name, which is usually $10. It's included in this package, which is pretty sweet. You also get unlimited free SSL, free emails with your website and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the premium web hosting plan right here. And from here, it's gonna ask you to choose your period. So how often you get charged every one month, every 12 months, 24 or 48 months. I'm gonna go ahead and select the 12 months. Also, just a quick reminder, your domain registration is gonna be for one year, so you might as well have your hosting set up to be one year as well. Completely up to you guys though. Okay, so from here, we're gonna scroll on down and I can enter in my email address to create my account and then just enter in all of my payment information down below. And you'll see that they take everything, credit card, PayPal, Google Pay, so anything you guys need. Also, make sure that the coupon code create a pro website right here is applied because that's gonna take you from $143 all the way down to $32, which is pretty sweet. I mean, that's a massive discount. So make sure that coupon code is there. Now that coupon code is gonna automatically be applied if you go to creativeprowebsite.com slash hostinger, which is that first link in the description. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my credit card information and I'll see you guys on the next screen. All right, so after entering your payment information, you're gonna be greeted by a page that says, hello. So that's kind of nice. From here, we're gonna click on start now and it's gonna ask if you wanna create or migrate a website. And so we're gonna be creating a new website from scratch for this tutorial. But if you already have a website and you're trying to migrate it over to Hostinger, you would just click on select right here. So next what I'm gonna do is create a new website by clicking select right here. And now we get to choose a platform. And so we've got WordPress and the Hostinger Builder with AI. We're gonna be using WordPress for this tutorial. So I'm gonna click on select just like this. And from here, we get to create our login details for our WordPress account. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you remember this password because this is how you're gonna log into your website every single time you wanna make changes to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my password and I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, so next it's gonna ask if you wanna add any plugins to your website and we're gonna say, yeah, I actually wanna add WooCommerce to my website. Now, just in case this doesn't work for any of you guys, I'm still gonna show you how to download it later once you're inside of WordPress, but Hostinger tries to make things really easy for you by allowing you to install plugins before you even get to your website. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna check this box right here and click on continue. Next, it's gonna ask if we wanna use a template for uh, our website, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip all of this because I'm gonna show you guys how to download the exact template you want. It's 
the next step in the video, and we're gonna have a lot more options than just eight options. We're gonna have a ton of them, so don't worry. So I'm gonna say skip on this one. Next, it's gonna ask for a new feature with Hostinger where it lets you try to automate your text creation with your website through AI. And so it's actually gonna be using ChatGPT to write a bunch of text content for your website. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make a video on this at another time. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this one because I wanna show you guys how to build your website from scratch on your own. But of course, if we need to later on in the video, I might use ChatGPT just to kind of fill in some of the blanks. But anyways, I'll say skip, I'll write my content later. Okay, so next, and this is the final process. Let's see, well, it's one of the closest to the final processes of this little website setup is claiming your domain name. And so either you can pay for one or if you got the premium plan, which I got, you'll get to use the free included domain name with your package, which is pretty cool. Otherwise it would be an extra $10. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on select right here to claim my free domain name. And now I get to choose whatever domain name I want. So I can type in whatever I want right here to see if it's available. And then I can also choose what I want to be at the end. And so I'm gonna do a .com just because I always recommend the most common that people look for and it's also the most professional looking. Obviously you guys can choose something else if you want, but that's what I'm gonna go with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try out some different domain names and I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, once you guys have a domain name that you're ready to try, you can click on the search button right here and see if it's available. And it looks like this domain name is available. So I basically just took interior design, which is what I wanted, .com, and I put CAPW in front of it for create a pro website. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna click on continue. And now I'm gonna click on finish registration. And lastly, we're gonna click on finish setup. All right, now Hostinger is gonna take some time to build your website and set up the back end. I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so now it looks like we are ready to go. So I'm gonna click on edit your website right here. Okay, perfect. I'm glad that it took me here. If you guys see a page that looks like this where it says this site can't be reached, or if you see something that basically says uh, your website domain.com slash preview or something like that, don't worry, nothing's wrong and nothing's broken. Basically all this means is that your website needs to propagate first. And website propagation is pretty simple. Basically what Hostinger is gonna do is it's gonna take this brand new domain name that you guys just purchased. So in my case, it's the capwinteriordesign.com. And it's gonna take that domain name and it's gonna send it to every single server in the entire world. So all the way around the world, it's gonna let everyone know that you just purchased it and now it's live and so it can't be taken anymore. Now this process of sending that domain name all over the world and making sure that it's registered on every single server can take some time. Usually it only takes about an hour or so. Sometimes it can be a, bit, a little bit less than that, but sometimes it can take up to an entire day. So all you gotta do is what I do. As you can see, it says this site can't be reached. You can always try clicking reload or refreshing the page or or just leave this tab open and come back in an hour and try clicking on edit website again until you basically come to your WordPress dashboard, which looks like this. That's when you know that your propagation is done and everything's good to go because this is your WordPress dashboard. As you can see, it says dashboard right here. So step number two is to download a plugin called starter templates. Now a plugin is similar to an app on your phone. When you download it, you're basically adding functionality to what your phone can do. So plugins are like apps, but just for your website. And website templates are essentially pre-built websites that you can just download and then just customize afterwards. This way you don't have to set up an entire structure before customizing. Downloading a website template is gonna save us a ton of time building it all from scratch, trust me. All we gotta do after downloading it is just swap out some pictures and text and you're done, obviously aside from setting up products. So in order to download the plugin starter templates, we're gonna go over here to the left-hand side. You're gonna hover your mouse over the plugins tab right here and then we'll click on add new, which I'm gonna open up on a new tab because personally, I always like having a dashboard that I can jump back to whenever I want just like this. I'm also going to go ahead and close out of this tab because we don't need hosting or anymore. Okay, so this is the add plugins page or essentially like the app store for your website. So from here, we can go over here to the search bar on the right hand side and type in starter templates like this. And it's going to be the first option that pops up right here. Starter templates, Elementor, WordPress, and Beaver Builder. So I'm going to click on install now, and then I'm going to click update, activate just like that. Okay, so from here, you're gonna be taken to the installed plugins page because we just clicked on add new. So under plugins, there's only two pages and we're on this one right now. And this is basically just a list of all of the plugins that are downloaded onto your website, WooCommerce being one of them. So that's pretty cool that we were able to download it in the background while we were setting up our website in the previous step. Okay, so anyways, now that you have starter templates enabled, you'll see that it's right here in your list and we can click on see library. From here, we're gonna say build your website and we're gonna be building our entire website with Elementor. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this page builder. 
All right, and so now, as you can see, we have a lot more templates than just the first eight that we were presented with when we were working with Hostinger just a little while ago. As you can see, I'm not even halfway down this list. It just keeps on going and going and going. So many templates they have available here on starter templates, which is pretty cool. I am trying to, oh, well, I can't grab that edge. There we go. And we can keep going all the way down to the very bottom if we want to, but I'm gonna go back to the top. Okay, so over here on the left-hand sort of top side, you've got all of these categories right here. And so we've got like the business, Business, local business, personal care, all this stuff. Maybe you're looking for a personal site and you're trying to do a portfolio. So you click on portfolio right here and you got a bunch of examples of portfolios that you can use. But I'm not gonna be doing a portfolio because obviously we're building an e-commerce store and we're looking for an online shop. So I could click on this one right here and I can scroll through all of their e-commerce platforms which is kind of cool, which actually, for some reason, it's not showing online shops, which is kind of weird. So I'm just gonna click on e-commerce itself. And okay, perfect, this is more like it. So these are a bunch of stores that I can choose if I like them. And so I'm actually gonna go with this one right here, the plant shop. I think it's really simple and minimalistic and it's gonna be easy to edit, especially for beginners. So this is what we're gonna use for this tutorial. But of course, you guys can use whatever template you guys want. So after you click on whatever template you like, you get this preview on the right-hand side where you can scroll through the entire website, which is pretty cool. And then it's completely interactable. So I can click on the about page or I could click on the contact page if I wanted to. And I can see all of the different pages that are on this website, which is pretty cool. And then over here on the left hand side is uh, where we're gonna be setting up the template. And so instead of just downloading it right now, we can do a couple things to make some very basic changes before we even download it. The first one being, hey, do you already have a logo built? Because if you do, we can just upload it right here by clicking here and you can upload it to your computer. But I'm going to show you guys how to create your own logo for free without having to download any software. And we're going to be doing it step number four. So right now we're on step number two, which is starter templates. So in a little bit, I'm going to show you guys how to build your own. So we're just going to skip and continue for now. Okay, so the next thing and final thing that you can do, there's only two things that you can do, was the logos and then it's the color and font. And so this screen right here, I can change the colors of my website. So let me show you a better example. Here we go. So you see all these icons and this button right here. I can change the color if I want to, to be yellow, if I want blue, purple, all of these different colors. And that's gonna change the colors of everything on the entire website, as you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and select the blue one because I personally just like that. And from here, we can also change the fonts. And you'll see that right now it's using, I don't know how you say that, Una and DM Sans. And so you guys can click through here and decide which one you guys like the most. As you can see, you can just select a whole bunch of different combos. Poppins Lato, I'm kind of liking. Let's see, compared to the default. Yeah, I kind of like Poppins Lato. I think I'm gonna do this one. So this is the one that I'm gonna choose. And when you guys are ready to go, you can click on continue continue and they've got the final step. As you can see, just one more step. We can enter in all of our information, which I'm just going to skip and not even do. You don't have to do it either. You want to leave all of these boxes checked except for this one. I mean, obviously if you want to do it, you can, but I'm just going to turn it off because I don't care to. But other than that, we still want it to import all of the content, the dummy content for the template. We want it to install all the plugins required for this website to work. We want it to import all the widgets, everything. So that's going to be cool. This is basically a one-stop shop. So it's going to install everything you need to make sure that this website is up and running for you, which is super cool. So I'm gonna click on submit and build my website. And from here, it's just gonna take a while for this website to be built. I mean, never more than a couple minutes, but that's a long time because I'm impatient. So I'll see you guys in just a second when it's done. Okay, congratulations. It only took 48 seconds to build a website. Uh, that's not that long. So from here, what I'm gonna do is click on view your website and it's gonna open up your complete domain name, as you can see, capwinteriordesign.com. And this is what people are gonna see whenever they visit your website. So they've got your beautiful hero section and then we've got some featured products up on top. We've got like this little promo banner or whatever it could be. And then some testimonials another promo banner and your footer down below. Okay, so from here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and close out of the starter templates tab right here. And so now I've just got my website up and I also have my dashboard. Now, for those of you guys who don't have a dashboard tab open to be able to go back to, what you can always do, you're gonna hover over your website name and here's dashboard right here. So I can click on it and it will take me back to my WordPress dashboard. So actually I'll just close out of that tab and let's go ahead and open up your website. Anytime you ever wanna open your website inside of WordPress, just hover over your website name right here and you can visit the site or the store. I always just literally open it on a new tab just like this. Okay, perfect. So now we're back to having our website up and running on one tab and the dashboard on the other. All right, now that we've downloaded the template, I'd like to start by customizing the homepage first so that we have something nice to look at. Let's go ahead and jump into Elementor and make some quick changes. Okay, so in order to open up Elementor from your website preview, which is what we're 
looking at right now. You're just gonna go up here to this admin banner, which by the way, this banner does not show up for anybody else except for you, the admin, so don't worry. But in order to edit with Elementor, we're literally just gonna click on edit with Elementor right here. Now, if for some reason that button was not there before, you can go to your WordPress dashboard, you can go over to pages, just like this, and then you can go to the homepage, there it is, the homepage, and then you can click on edit with Elementor right here. It's gonna take you to the exact same place, which is Elementor. Okay, so now it's gonna tell you that, hey, look, Elementor now has AI inside of it, which is pretty cool, especially with AI becoming so prevalent nowadays, having text-based AI functions is kind of a necessity at this point, otherwise you're just kind of falling behind. So it's nice that Elementor is gonna have some AI functions. We'll click on continue. And then it's gonna also ask if you wanna use Flexbox containers. We're gonna leave it off for now, but I already have a video on the channel. I think I released it like one or two videos ago, I think. If not, it's the next one coming out, forgive me me for not remembering the order in which I'm posting these videos, but I literally just created a video on how to use Flexbox containers. So if you guys are interested, you guys can go and check that one out. I can leave a link to that into the description, but uh, that's of course, if I already posted it, if not, it might come after this tutorial. But anyways, uh, we're gonna go ahead and leave the Flexbox containers off. So we're using the basic version of Elementor essentially. Now over here, the navigator, this thing kind of just gets confusing because you can open up and I can click on whatever I'm editing. And instead of just, you know, coming over here and clicking on the heading, you have to go and navigate the navigator. Navigator, I just never use this thing personally. So I'm just gonna click on the X button to get that off. Okay, so now we are inside of Elementor. And so this is what you're gonna be looking at when you first open. You'll see that as I hover my mouse over all of these things, all of these boxes appear and everything. And that's because I can click on whatever I want on my website and literally just edit it right then and there, which is pretty cool. Let's go over the layout first. You've got a section, which is basically the background of any big part of your website. So as you can see, every time I move my mouse, over this white area, this purple box kind of highlights all the way around the entire thing like this. And so this is a section, it's like the background. So the same thing for this section up here. Now you can see it's barely, like it's very faint, but you can see the pink line that goes all the way around the edge. And then it, it tapers off to the top right here with this little tab. This is a section and it's basically the background. It's how you can change the background images and things like that. Inside of a section, you've got a column which is this gray dotted box right here. Here, hang on, let me put my cursor onto something else so that that pink box is gone. Okay, so now inside of a section, you've got columns, which are these gray dotted box. And then inside of the column, you can place widgets, which are obviously the things that you're gonna be putting onto your website. So you've got like headings, you can put a picture in here, right? And then I could upload a picture if I wanted to. You can put a video in here. If you wanted to put a video, you could. You just drag it in just like this. It's really easy to do. But I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the little pink edit icon in the top right corner whenever you hover over something and just delete both of those. Now, as you just saw, Elementor is a drag and drop builder. So all I have to do is if I wanna add a button, I can literally just drag in this widget and you'll see that pink line is where it's gonna go. So if I want it right here in between the button and the text, I can let go and now I have a button right here. So that's pretty cool. And I can make the button look like this, obviously, but but I'll show you guys how to do that later. But for now, I'm just gonna right click and say delete. So on the right hand side of your screen, you've got your website preview. And on the left hand side of your screen, we've got the menu, which is where we have all of the widgets. And then if I click on something where we're gonna have all of the settings that we can change to edit the website, which is pretty cool. Okay, and then the last thing I wanna show is the bottom right here, this bottom corner, this little pink update button. You're gonna click on that and every time you make a change to your website and you click update, that's basically like saving your work and it's updating the live version of your website with any changes you might have made. Okay, so now that that's over with and you guys have a basic of understanding of what you're at least looking at, let's go ahead and jump into actually making changes and customizing our website. And it's really, really easy to do. So the first thing I wanna do is edit this hero section right? And then next we have like our product section. And then we've got like this about section, as you can see, and that's what these big boxes are. So starting with this hero section, if you want to edit a section, you can just click way out here in the ether anywhere, like right click and say edit section, or you can go over here and click on these six dots right here. And you'll see it says edit section. And so now we're editing the background basically. From here, if you wanna change the background image, you're just gonna to go to the style tab because you're changing the style of this section. And you'll see that under background, we've got a picture right here and it's the same picture that's back here. And if I wanna change it, I can just click on it and I can choose from any of the pictures that are already on this website template, which all of these pictures have nothing to do with your business or the fake business that I'm trying to build this website for. So we're not gonna use any of these, but you're gonna to wanna to upload your own pictures of your business to your website, obviously. And so the way you do that is you just click on upload files and click on select files. And now you can upload them from your computer 
which I'm gonna be using WooCommerce right here. And I went ahead and saved a bunch of pictures, here we go, that I'm gonna use for the homepage. I'm just gonna highlight all of them at the same time and just upload them all at once. Okay, perfect. So now I've got my pictures here and obviously I'm building an interior design website because you know, my domain name says interior design right here. So that being said, let's go ahead and change the background. I can click on whatever picture I want and say select. And now just like that, I have changed the background of my website, which that's actually a really good looking background. Now, what I wanna do is something a little special. Instead of just putting a stagnant image in the background where it's not changing, what I wanna do is change my background type. And so I've got things like classic, which is just a picture. I've got gradient, which would be a gradient between two different colors. So if I chose, you know, red, and then if I chose like blue, for instance, that's weird. There we go. As you can see, you can put a gradient in the background. You can place a video in the background, which you would have to get a YouTube link and paste it right here. Or you can use a slideshow, which is what I'm gonna be doing. And with the slideshow, we're gonna go over here and select our images. And I'm gonna choose my first three images right here and then click on create new gallery. And so now you can see the pictures that are gonna show up and you can change the order by dragging and dropping them if you want, but I like the order that it's in. And now I'm gonna click on insert. And just like that, now I've got a background slideshow going on. So now every five seconds, it's gonna change to a new picture, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. You can go over here and change the duration. So right now it's in milliseconds. I don't know why Elementor does milliseconds instead of just seconds. 1000 milliseconds is one second. So this 5,000 milliseconds just means five seconds. So every five seconds, the background is changing. If I wanna change it to every three seconds, I would just change this to 3000 just like this. Now every three seconds, it's gonna change to a different picture. If I really wanna exaggerate it, I could change it every one second, and now it's gonna keep changing really fast, but that could get obnoxious. So I'll leave it at every five seconds. You can also enable the Ken Burns effect, which does this really cool slow zoom. And so every time the background changes, it's just gonna pick a different picture and it's like zooming. I think that looks awesome, so I'm gonna leave it on. And you can also choose if you want it to zoom in or zoom out. So if I go out, now it's gonna zoom out like this, but I think that looks wrong, so I'm gonna stick to in. Okay, so now that you've inserted your image in the background, we can go ahead and change the text of our website. And it's really easy to do. You just click on it and you can literally just start typing on the screen, just like this, which is pretty cool. You can also do the same thing by just clicking over here and you can edit your text as well, as you can see, and it'll still appear. So instead of saying, welcome to green store, I'll say, welcome to, welcome to CAPW interior design. And then we can also change this text right here by clicking on it. And I can literally just type on screen if I want to. So let's bring the spring to your home or let's bring, let's bring professional design to your home. So something like this. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is notice how some of my words are capitalized and some of them aren't. Because I'm too lazy to just do this and hit the backspace button, what I'm gonna do is go to the style tab. I can click on typography. And by the way, this is where you can change the font by clicking on family right here. You can also change the size, you can change the weight and all this stuff. What I'm gonna do is go over here to the transform button and I can change it all to capitalize. And just like that, now every letter is gonna be capitalized because this is a title. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so now that I've changed my text and I'm happy or satisfied with what I have here, I can also click on my button so I can right click and say edit button or you can hover over it and click on the pencil icon. And now we're gonna be editing our button. And so over here on the left hand side, you can see that the text says shop now, which I feel like is pretty accurate because if they click on this button, it's gonna go to the shop page. And so we should actually change that link right now. We can click on the hashtag and we can search through all of our pages by just clicking on uh, store. I think it's actually called plants. No. All right, let me double check really quickly. I'm gonna go over here to the dashboard, go to pages really fast. And what is our store page called? It's called shop. Yeah, no, I totally looked for shop and I didn't see it there. Well, you know what we can do is we can just view the page like this and I can just copy and paste the link just like this. And so now if I click on update to save my work, anytime someone clicks on this button, it's gonna take them to my store page. So let me show you guys what I mean right now. If you ever wanna preview your website outside of Elementor, you can just click on this eyeball right here and it's gonna open up your website. And so from here, if I were a customer and I click on shop now, it's gonna take me to the store page where I can you know, obviously click on products and I can add them to my basket. So that's pretty cool. So that is how you can edit a button is by clicking on edit button or the pencil icon. And there's really only two things you're gonna change with a button. You're gonna change the link so this is where it's going to take them and you can change the text and so if you want to say instead of shop now you could say check out our products or something like that but i'm going to leave that text right here okay so that's pretty good now that our hero section looks good what i'm going to do is scroll on down and we've got our new plants section which instead of new plants what i might do is just change this text to say something like new products 
Or you could say something like featured products, so something like this. And then this button, of course, we're gonna edit it and make sure that it goes to the store page. Ah, there it is. Okay, so you click on shop page and it's gonna automatically insert that link in there for you so you don't have to do what I just did and go to over here to pages and copy paste the link. So that's pretty cool. So now when you click on this button, it's gonna take you to the store page. And then we've got these products down below. And so we're gonna be editing this later because obviously we're gonna be changing out these products, but for now we're just gonna leave them here, so ignore it. Let's go on down a little bit further. Next we have this about section. So first let's change this background image and then we can change the text. And if you wanna change the background image, you wanna edit the section, go to the style tab and we're gonna choose a picture. And so I'm gonna pick this picture right here and then I'm gonna click on select just like that. And so now I've got my picture in the background and I can also make sure that my display size is cover, which is gonna stretch my picture to be full width in this background here. And then I can also choose to focus on the center of the image. So just like this. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. The next thing I'm gonna do is I can click over here and I can change the text of whatever this says. So for instance, it says our story for people who love plants. Well, we're not plant people here. We are interior design people here. So what I'm gonna do is just change this to interior design. So, so for people who love interior design, and then we've got some text down here. Let's go ahead and try out Elementor's new AI. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete all of this. And let's click on write with AI. All right, and so we're gonna have to connect our Elementor account. And so you can click on connect right here. And you're gonna have to log into your Elementor account, which I'm just gonna use Google. All right, and then it's gonna ask you to connect your account, and so I did, and then I'm just going to approve the terms of service and say get started. Okay, and so now I'm gonna just close out of that box because the whole point is using this, which actually, just kidding, it's going to be this box right here. So I can say uh, what I want it to write, so let's do, all right, so let's try something out like this and see what we get. Okay, so welcome to our Austin-based interior design company where we provide, or where we pride ourselves on creating unique and personalized spaces that reflect the individual style of our clients. Oh wow, this looks fantastic. And then we can also simplify it, make it longer, make it shorter, all of that stuff. But what I'm gonna do is just click on use text and it's gonna automatically throw it right into my about section right here. And just like that, I used AI inside of Elementor to write some of my website. So that's pretty cool. From here, what we can do is edit the button as well just by clicking on it. Like like this edit button and we can make sure that this button is going to take them to the about page so let's go ahead and just type out about and Elementor is going to search all of the pages on your website and you can see that one of the pages is about and it's going to go ahead and link that to your about page okay so I think the about section looks fantastic uh, from here I'm going to click on update to save my work and other than that let's move on next we have our testimonial section now if you don't have any testimonials because you're just starting out you could literally just delete this section by clicking this X and have it go straight from the about section to this little promo banner. But if you do have, and by the way, I just hit control Z or command Z, which is gonna undo what I just did. But if you do have testimonials, you guys can edit this to put in the testimonials from your clients. So if you have some of your clients who email you testimonials, you can just copy paste the text straight into this little text right here. And so you would just paste it right here. And then you can choose the image by asking if they wanna send a picture of them, which you guys can obviously just select like this, and then you would insert. And so that's how you get their little tiny pictures in here. And then if you wanna change her name from Jennifer, you can type in the name right here. So there's Jennifer Lewis, and I could type out whatever I want, as you can see. So I'll let you guys insert your own testimonials right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just not even touch this section because you guys already know how to make the changes. So after this, we have this final little, I guess it's just like a promo banner of some kind. I mean, it's just saying, hey, use your gift card, blah, blah, blah. First thing I'm gonna do is change the background because we're not selling plants, we're selling furniture. So let's go over to that style tab again, just like we did for the hero section way up here. And what we're gonna do is just click on the picture and change it to this one. Perfect. Give the gift of, and we're gonna say interior design again. Give the gift of interior design. I've got gift cards, which I don't, but you know what I mean. And then from here, purchase a gift card. Instead of gift cards, if you wanted to, you could say give the gift. Instead of saying give the gift, you could say something like, hey, check out this new chair that we have. And you could say, and you could have this button linked to something else. I'll let you guys get creative on what you're trying to promote in your promo banner right here. But you guys know how to just click right here and you guys can change whatever the text is. So obviously you guys know how to make the changes here and you can just link the button to whatever you want. So I'm gonna leave this one the way it is. Is. And then finally, we have these three little icons, which I'm personally just gonna leave right here, but it's kind of saying things like secure payment, delivered with care, excellent service. You guys can change these around if you want to, but I'm gonna leave them. If you wanna change them, you can just click on the pencil icon right here. If you wanna change the icon, you can just click on it, and now you can search for any icon you want. As you can see, they have a lot of them. 
and then you can change the text literally by just clicking on your page and typing again, or you can come over here and you can change the title and the description. So that's the title and that's the description right below it. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm gonna click on update to save my work. And just like that, we've changed this website from being a plant website to being a interior design website. So it's pretty easy to make changes inside of Elementor. That's why I like using it. Now, we only edited the homepage. What you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and close out of Elementor. We can open up our website on a new tab. So obviously our homepage is now a furniture store, but what about the about page? It's still plants, and so is the contact, which actually the contact is pretty generic, so you'd be fine leaving it the way it is. You would just wanna make changes to the text. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is every time you're done editing one of these pages, open up your website again, outside of Elementor, and go over to the next page you wanna edit, and now I'm gonna edit the about page inside of Elementor. And then in here, what I would do is I could edit the video here and I could change, you know, to be a picture or something like that. I can change this gallery, I can click on it, but I can edit the gallery and I can just change my pictures right here. I can take all of these out if I wanted to and I could insert my own files, not like that. Let's go to add to gallery from a media library. Let's do this one and then we'll also just do that. Well, not that one. We need a landscape picture. Let's do that one. Okay, add to gallery. And we'll say, I need to remove these two and say insert gallery. And as you can see, it looks terrible. You'd wanna make sure that they're all cropped to be the exact same size, but you guys get the idea. All you gotta do is change up the about page and then you can also do the same thing for the contact page. So you're gonna close out of Elementor. Obviously save your work. I'm just doing this to show you guys. And then, so now I have my website open again. I'm gonna go over to the contact page, edit with Elementor. And then I would come in here and change everything. And you guys know how to change text. All you gotta do is click on this right here and I can start typing. I can change all of this. And then all these things are, are just the exact same icon boxes as on your homepage. So right here. So these right here are identical to these right here. And it's really easy to make edits to them because you just click on it. And again, you can just change the icon and change the text right here. So I'm gonna let you guys enter in all of your contact information and I'm gonna let you guys edit the about page and the contact page completely on your own because editing more pages would just make this tutorial way longer, but you guys already know how to use Elementor now. That being the case, we can go ahead and move on to step number four, which is to customize your header, footer, and logos. All right, now that our homepage looks good, let's go ahead and add the finishing touches by making changes to our logo, the header, and also the footer. So to make those changes to everything, we're gonna go over here to the left-hand side from your WordPress dashboard, and we're gonna hover our mouse over the appearance tab, and then we're gonna open up the customizer right here. Again, I always like to open up everything on a new tab so that I can jump back to a dashboard if I need it. Okay, so now same thing as Elementor. We've got the website preview on the right-hand side as well as the settings that we're gonna be changing on the left-hand side. That's a pretty stereotypical way of editing a website. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna make changes to is gonna be the logo. Now, I told you guys, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a logo for free without having to download any software, and I mean it. So let's do that right now. We're gonna open up a new tab and go to logomaker.com but without the E. Just like that. And then you can always click on templates if you wanna look at the templates that they have available. But I'm gonna go ahead and just build one from scratch. So we're just gonna click on new design just like this. And from here, over here on the left-hand side, we've got the basic functions like a text. So I could just add text like this. I could add a shape. So if I wanna add a square, here's a square. And then I also add the paint bucket to you know paint colors and things like that. Let's go ahead and delete all of that. On the right-hand side, well, let me show you guys. On the right-hand side, we've got things like the saturation square right here, the color wheel, as you can see, and the opacity as well. And then up in the top left corner, we can search from over 3 million different graphics to choose from to build our logo. So I'm gonna click on back to canvas. So I'm just gonna build a really simple logo. You guys can get pretty crazy and try to make something really intricate using this software. But for me, I'm just gonna go over here and search for a couch, because obviously I am an interior design web Website. And I'm gonna scroll through here and see if I find a couch that I really like. And I think that this one looks pretty good right here. So I'm gonna use it. So I've got a couch. And then next what I'm gonna do is add some text like this. And I'm gonna change the font. They've got categories. So like fun and funky, handwriting, all of that stuff. And then they have the actual fonts inside the category, which under designer picks, I'm gonna go to, here it is, Cormorant like this. Cause it kind of gives it like this fancy looking text style. And from here, I'm just gonna go all caps and type in interior design. And then I'm gonna do one more and I'm just gonna type out my name. 
Okay, and we're gonna drag this down. So now, like you saw me do earlier, you can highlight everything if you want to, to make multiple changes at once. So if I highlight everything and just change the color to black, now everything's black, which is pretty cool. So the next thing I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and focus on centering up my text. So I'm gonna drag my text underneath. I'm gonna click on the styles little button right here, and I want my letter spacing to be like really exaggerated. And then from here, I'm just gonna reduce its size. And I might even reduce the size a little bit more. Yeah, so something like this I think looks fantastic. And then we're gonna center the text up underneath. I think it needs to go a little bit over to the right. I think that looks pretty close. Well, let's uh, click on it and you can use your arrow keys to make really small changes. A little bit to the left. I'm being super picky, but whatever. Okay, so now it's perfectly centered underneath my text. I can highlight everything, make sure it's right there, and I can bring my couch in and center it on the title, just like that. Let's pull it up a little bit more, perfect. And actually what I'm gonna do is increase the size of this bad guy. I think that looks good. Bring in my couch, just like that. Interior design by Levi Hagen. Now what I can do is I can change the couch to be the same color as everything that's on my website. And there's a few ways of doing this. Usually the way that I do it is I hit, so it's Command Shift C like this. And I don't expect you guys to know this, but I'll usually go over here, click on this button right here, if I can get it to work. Here, I'll click on this icon instead. Well, it's not gonna work there. So we'll use the button and then I can scroll on down here. And here's the blue color that I'm using on the website. And so I can copy this, Command C. But I don't expect you guys to know that. I just wanted to show you that's how I do it. What we can do is we can just open up our website on a new tab and go back inside of Elementor, just like this. And then from here, we can scroll on down to one of our buttons, go to the Style tab, and we can pull our blue, which it looks like is right here. And so it's gonna be 084AF3. So that's how you can pull the blue color from your website. That, that way we can paste it directly onto this guy, Controller Command V. Now I've got the exact same blue that's matching on my website, so it's gonna look like it belongs there. Okay, so this is my logo. It's very simple. It's not anything fancy, but I just want to do this for the tutorial, obviously. So now that I have my tutorial ready to go, whenever you're ready to save it, you can click up here in the top right corner on Save Logo. And then it's going to ask, if you want the high resolution licensed file, you can click right here and it's going to say, hey, you got to pay for it. And that's okay. We're not going to pay for it because the whole point is to do this for free, right? So instead of clicking on download your files, we're going to say download the low resolution PNG file completely for free. We're going to accept the terms and condition that we have to acknowledge that this is from Logo Maker, at least somewhere on our website. And then we can click on download the low resolution file right here. And as you can see, for free, I just downloaded my logo onto my website. So that's pretty cool. I always personally recommend going with the pro licensed high resolution file, especially if you're gonna try and put this on t-shirts and things like that. The low resolution file is gonna be too small for that, but at least it's perfect for a website if you don't wanna pay any money. Okay, so there's one more thing that we have to do and that's make a site icon. And so what we're gonna do is actually just delete the text right here and save the couch. So we'll click on the save icon, download the low resolution file, accept the terms, and we're good to go. Just like that. We can close out, and now we don't need this website anymore. Now, a site icon, for any of you who are curious, is this little guy right up here. It's also called a favicon, but it's gonna be the little tab icon that shows up when people open your website up. So I'm showing you guys how to insert that right now. Okay, so anytime you are inside of the customizer, now that we've built the logo, anytime you're in the customizer and you want to edit something, you can always just hover and click on the blue pencil icon, and it's gonna take you directly to that setting, as you can see. So if I wanna edit the logo, I can click on it, and it's gonna take me directly to where that logo is. And so, but I'm not gonna do that because I wanna show you guys exactly where everything is. So from the main menu, you're gonna go over to the header builder and then you're gonna drop down to transparent header. And from here, we're gonna click on change image. And then all we gotta do is just upload the files that we just created. And so I think those went into my downloads folder. And so I'm just gonna upload both of them at the same time. And we'll choose the logo first. And we can sh click on choose image just like this. All right, and now notice how my logo is actually hard to see because I have a dark background. So we should actually fix that before we go any further. And that means we have to go back into Logo Maker. So bear with me guys. Start my design, and at least my couch is still gonna be there. So I'm gonna say resume previously built work. All I gotta do is add my text again. So let's go over here to, where was it? Cormorant or Cormorant, there we go, Cormorant. And we're going to put in interior design, add some more text. Levi Hagen, drop it down. We'll make all of this black and then I'm gonna center it and increase the letter spacing just like this. 
and we'll increase the size of this text a little bit. Looks good. Okay, nope, snap into place, there we go. Okay, so now we've got our logo. We notice that on my website, it's really hard to see that text whenever any of the dark pictures pop up. So in five seconds when this switches, it's kind of hard to see that logo. And so most of the time when you have a transparent header, what you're gonna wanna do is actually make your logo white. And you can still keep the blue obviously, but white. And so from here, we're gonna save the logo one more time. Accepting the terms and conditions, downloading it to our computer. We're good to go. I'm gonna close out of these tabs now. And so instead of downloading this one, we're actually gonna change the image and upload it one more time and use the white logo. Choose the image. And now, as you can see, it's so much easier to see this logo. We can change the logo width, which is basically just gonna increase the size of the logo. So let's make it a little bit bigger. And now you can see it. Cool. Whenever you're done, click on publish, and that's the same as the update button inside of Elementor. That's gonna publish your work live on your website and save your work. Okay, now, in order to put our icon up here, what we can do is go over to our site title and logo, and you'll also notice that they have the black version of their logo, because if you remember on the transparent header, they had the white version of their logo right here. On the regular logo, they have the black one, and that's because if I go to the store page, you'll see that now it's a white background. And WordPress understands that a transparent versus a white background is different. And so my white logo is not gonna pop up here. So let's go ahead and upload the black logo right here, skip the cropping. And so now you can see the text on the white background. And so that's actually why, I made it look like an accident, but that's why I actually create two versions of every logo I build. One's gonna be the dark and one's gonna be the light. And so again, the way that you do that is the transparent header is where the white one goes and the site title and logo is where the black one goes, or the dark logo. Now that we've got both logos installed on the website, we can scroll right on down, as you can see, and at the very bottom, we've got site icon. And so all we have to do is select the site icon, which is the couch. We're going to skip the cropping, and as you can see, now we've got the icon up there. Now, the mistake that I made is that you want your icon to be a square and not the a rectangle like mine was. And so if you guys wanna make a change, you can, but I just wanted to show you that whatever you upload into your site icon is now gonna pop up up here. And so we can refresh this page and you'll see that it's gonna pop up right there as well. Cool, so now we have completely branded our website. So we can move on to the header and then also the footer of the website. So let me go back to the home tab or the home page. We'll click back, back inside of the header builder. And now you'll notice that down here, we've got a direct representation of what we're seeing up here in the header builder. We've got the menu, the basket and the account button all right here. And then we've got the site title and logo over here. So if I drag the site title and logo into the middle spot, you'll see that now it's in the middle. And then if I wanted to drag these to the bottom like this, I totally could. And so now I've got my buttons down here and my icon up here. Wanted to show you guys that, but we're gonna leave it the way that the template came because I'm trying to do the least amount of work possible just to make sure that you guys get your site up and running and it's easy. But you'll notice that right now the menu says plants and we need to fix that because we're not selling plants, we're selling furniture, right? Or we're selling interior design stuff. And so plants just won't do. If you wanna edit your menus, we're not gonna be inside of the header builder anymore. We're actually gonna have to drop down to menus and you'll see that the primary menu is the one we need to change, which is this menu up here. And you'll see that we have home plants about and contact and we have home plants about and contact and you'll see that if I click on plants I can just change the title right here and it will still go to the shop page so instead of saying plants I could just say something like store okay and just like that now I've got home store about contact and so that's how you can make a really easy change to your navigation menu we'll click on publish to save our work and let's click on it just to double check that it still goes to the store page and it does so it's gonna open up the store good to know okay so now that we've done that we can click on the back button and go back inside of our header builder. The last few things we have is the shopping cart and the account button over here. And so if you want to edit the basket or the account button, you can always just click on the blue pencil icon. And again, it'll take you straight there. But remember, you're going to go from the main menu to header builder. And then inside of the header builder, you've got the basket and the account button right here. And you can also click down here. It's the same thing. So multiple ways of getting to the same place. I personally don't like a basket. I prefer a cart. That's just me though. So I'm gonna select the cart just like this, click on publish to save my work. And now, as you can see, we've got the cart over here. So that's pretty cool. And so I wanted to show you guys, you can do that. And then you can also click on the account button right here. And you can either use the icon, which looks like this, the avatar, which they would have to download. So it's just gonna be a placeholder or text, which says my account. But personally, I like the icon. I think it just looks the most minimalistic. And so that's what I'm gonna go with. And we'll click on publish to save. Okay, so that is the header. There's nothing else that we need to change because we already made changes to the navigation menu, the shopping cart icon, and to this right here. We also inserted our logo. So now what we can do is scroll on down to the bottom and then we can back out and go down to the footer builder right down here. And you'll see that it's the exact same orientation or the 
the visual representation as down below. We've got the footer menu, which is right here. Widget three, two, and socials are gonna be this text, this contact form, and this social icon right here. And then we have the copyright down below. And you guys can, of course, just click on which one you guys wanna edit. So if you wanna edit your footer menu, you're just gonna click on it and you can configure it here. You guys can try and change the text if you want by clicking on widget three. And you'll see that all it is is just white text. You just can't see it. It's right here, but it's white. And so it's white on a white background. But as you can see, I can highlight it and it says subscribe to the newsletter. So if you want to text something here, you can just start typing and you're, you'll see that I can uh, I can see what I'm typing here. So let me go ahead and newsletter from here. Well, here, let me just do this. Okay, perfect. So if you wanna edit this text, you're just gonna to have to kinda of highlight it like this, see what you wrote, and then just type it out, but that's a weird glitch. Anyways, but you've got your text right here, and then if you wanna edit your contact form, it's widget two, and then if you wanna edit, as you can see, and then if you wanna edit your socials, you just click on social right here. And these are really easy to edit. You can just click on it, cause that's the Instagram one, and you just paste the link to your Instagram account. And then you would do the same thing for Facebook. You paste the URL to your Facebook account so that when someone clicks on it, it takes them to this link. So you would just go over here, go to Facebook or Instagram like this. And then you would click on this and you would sign in and then copy and paste the link to your Instagram. Put it right here, right? Same thing for Facebook, same thing for Twitter. And then if you wanna add any, you've got all these icons. So if I wanted to add my YouTube account, add it, and now I can just paste my URL. And then if you wanna delete one, you just click on the X button. And then you can also hide them, but it's pretty much the same thing as deleting them. So I don't know why you would do it, but it's there. Okay. So once you guys have made changes to the footer, which personally, it's like a perfect footer. I wouldn't make any changes to this other than just adding your socials because this is gonna be the same menu as the one up top. As you can see, it says store right here because we made the change up here. So it's definitely duplicating this menu just down below. There's no real reason to make changes here except for just linking up your socials. Click on publish to save your work. And that is everything for the logo, header, and footer. And so we'll just close out of this tab and go back to the WordPress dashboard. But if you did not open a new tab, just click on the X button right here and it'll take you back to your WordPress dashboard and refresh the page. All right, so now let's go ahead and hop into the nitty gritty and create those six different products that I talked about at the beginning of the video. Let's go ahead and do that right now. And I think we've got the simple, variable, digital, downloadable, affiliate, and the group products. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so anytime you want to create a product, you're gonna go over here to the products tab right underneath WooCommerce because you've got all your WooCommerce stuff right here. And so I'm gonna open up products on a new tab and it's gonna show all of the products on your website. Oh my goodness, this template comes with so many of them. We're actually gonna delete all of these. You can check them individually like this, or you can just click on this one and it's gonna check all of them. And we're just gonna say bulk actions, move to the trash can and apply. And so now in my bin, I don't know why it calls it a bin because normally it calls it trash. So maybe there's been an update on WordPress. It's kind of weird, whatever. Let's go ahead and add the rest of these and apply. And so now inside of the trash can, we've got all 25 of my items and so we can just go ahead and permanently delete all of them and we'll do it again for the last five. Perfect. Okay. So we've got zero products on our website. So now when you click on products like this, you're going to get taken to a page that looks like this because you don't have any. So now we're going to click on create a product. So let's go ahead and start with a simple product. And to keep things simple and easy for you guys to understand, I'm literally going to call it simple product, but this is the title of the product. So if I'm selling a couch, you'd want to say, you know, couch. Obviously sell the brand name and everything like that, but you guys get the idea. So this is the title. Everyone's going to see this, but just for namesake, I'm just going to put in like a placeholder for you guys. So you understand what this one is. Okay. So from here, we've got the product description, all of the product data, and then the short description. So let me go ahead and show you guys what all this means. But before I do, well, actually let's go ahead and build it all the way through and then I'll preview it and point to everything that you just created. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is open up a new tab and go to dummy text, just like this. And we're going to go to the lorem ipsum generator. And I'm just going to use this as placeholder text for the product, right? And so I'll just take this entire paragraph of dummy text right here and we'll go inside. Now, the product description, I'm just gonna paste a bunch of dummy text, just like this. I'll even make it look like it's a uh, massive paragraph by doing this. Okay, cool. So we've got our product description. Now, obviously this is where you're gonna put in the description of the product. So it's size, it's dimensions, what it's applicable for, what it can, uh, what it's compatible with, all of the, you know, things that it can do, everything. Basically imagine like if you went to Amazon, you know, let's just go to Amazon for example. We'll go to this one and we just click on a random product. Let's just go shop by department and we'll go to PC gaming and let's just pick a monitor. Okay, 
cool. So we're looking at a gaming monitor. The title right here is what all of this is. So it's the first thing they're gonna see, right? And then what we're doing right now is the product description, which is going to be, it's down here. I'm so dumb. Okay, so this is like the product description down here. And so that's what we're building right now. And so this is where, again, you would put in, as you can see, all of the information about what this computer can do. It's 27 inches, 1080p, it's FHD, 75 hertz, which is actually kind of a, well, that's why it's a really cheap gaming monitor. I was gonna say 75 hertz is a very small refresh rate, but whatever. So now, that we've got our product description, we can move on down to the product data. And so as you can see, if you go to product type right here, we've got all of the different types, including these two, for the six different products that we're gonna build. We've got the simple, then we've got the variable, and then we have the digital and downloadable, and then we've got the affiliate and grouped right here. Okay, so we're starting with the simple. So under the simple, the general tab, you just enter in the price. So however much I wanna sell the simple product for, which it's gonna be a couch. So let's just say I'm selling this thing for $900. I can also set a sale price. And so let's see if this has an example. Yeah, so right now, what I just set was the actual price, $900. And so normally it would show right here. But if I set it on sale, it'll put the real price right here, cross a line through it and put the sale price up on top. Okay, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. But if you wanna add a sale price, you could say I'm selling it for $800, for example. And then I can also schedule it. So instead of just permanently being $800 on sale forever, I could say from today until until, you know, next month on the 30th or something like that. And now it's only for this month till the 30th, it's going to be on sale for $800. And then when this is done, it goes back to the $900. So that's how you can schedule sales if you want to. Next, we'll go to inventory and we're gonna set a SKU number, which is essentially the same thing as like a license plate or a special number that identifies this product, right? And so an SKU might just be 00001 right? And then for my next product, it'll be 0002 and so on. Uh, stock management. Do you want WooCommerce to track the stock, like how much you have of this product? And so you can say yes, and then you can tell it all the information or you can leave it off. If you're doing like a downloadable product, there's no point in doing stock management because it's a downloadable product. So that all they got to do is just click download. But for a product like this, where I have a physical item, I might want to track my inventory. So I'll say yes, track my inventory. And then I can tell them how many I have. And so let's say I've got you know, 200 of these couches in stock. And then I can say, do I wanna allow back orders? And so basically if I run out and I'm down to zero, can I still allow people to order this couch? And it'll just tell them, oh yes, you know, uh, you, you ordered it, but I'm back ordered. Or I can say no. So if I say do not allow, it basically means if I hit zero, this is gonna say unavailable. You can't purchase this product. If I say allow, but notify the customer, it'll basically mean it'll tell them, yes, you can purchase it. And then when they click buy, it'll tell them, hey, just so you know, it's back ordered. And then if I just say allow, it's not going to notify the customer, but I feel like it's good practice to let them know if they're buying a product that's back ordered. So I'd say it's between these two options, but let's just say do not allow just to be extra safe. So if I run out of stock, people can't back order. Okay. Now we've got the low stock threshold, which is basically like where, at what number do you want WooCommerce to let you know that you're low on stock? And so when I get down to 10 couches left in my inventory, tell me, Hey buddy, you need to go order more couches to sell. And so it's kind of like a reminder to buy couches. And then you can also check this box if you want it sold individually. We're not gonna do that for this product or for many of them. Basically, this means that you can only limit it to one item per customer. So if they come in here to my website and they click purchase, they can only buy one couch. They can't buy four couches. But most of the time you want them to be able to buy as many as they want. Only time you wouldn't is probably on a virtual product where it's like if they're ordering like a special seat in a webinar or a Zoom meeting, you don't want them to be able to book all of the seats and it's only one person because that's, there's no point. So you'd make that sold individually. So that's inventory, pretty simple. It's just create an SKU and then allow your stock management and then if you want it individually or not. Okay, so the regular price is under dollars. So we don't have to change that, which is nice. By the way, if you're in a different country and you're not using US dollars, it's really easy to change the dollars. Just go over here to WooCommerce and go to settings on a new tab. And under general, you just scroll all the way down to the bottom and you can change your currency right here. So instead of the US dollar, you can choose whatever currency is available in whatever country you're in. And as you can see, they got all of them. So that's how you would do that. Now, under the shipping tab, this is what reminded me right here, kilograms and centimeters. If I wanna change this from kilograms to pounds and I wanna change this from centimeters to inches, I can do that too. And it's the exact same place. You go to WooCommerce, settings, which I never closed out of the tab. And instead of under the general tab, you just go to the products tab and then I can change my weight unit to pounds and dimensions to inches and save my changes.
And just like that, these will change, but I have to refresh the page. So if I wanna refresh the page, let's go ahead and publish to save our work right here. And now we're gonna refresh the page. And if I come back into the shipping tab, now it says pounds and inches. So that's cool. Now I'm gonna let you guys put in the weight and the dimensions of whatever product you're trying to sell. I guess I could put in some fake dimensions. So let's say this couch weighs, I don't know how much a couch weighs. Let's just say 150 pounds. I don't know if that's a light couch or a heavy couch. I'm just putting in a number that's off the top of my head. And then let's also put in some dimensions. Let's say that this is in inches is, I don't know, let's just say this, let's go length is like 60 and the width might be like 38 or something. And then the height might be like, I don't know, 36 or something like that. That might be a funny looking couch, but you guys get the idea. You wanna put in your weight and dimensions for your inventory for your shipping right here. Okay, and so next after you do your shipping, you're gonna click on linked products. We're basically just going down the list as you can see. The linked products is upsells and cross sells. And don't worry, after we create all six products, I'm gonna talk about this. So we're gonna skip over this. Next we have attributes, which again, we're gonna skip over this because you only use attributes when you do a variable product, which is literally the next product we're gonna build. So hold on a second. But basically attributes are where you can add things like size or color. So small, medium, large, or red, blue, green. Like let's say you have a t-shirt and you've got small, medium, large, extra large, and then you have different colors of the same t-shirt. That's where you would do attributes. But if you add attributes, it's no longer a simple product, it's a variable product. So anyways, we're skipping over this. Under the advanced tab, you've got the purchase note. And so this is basically after they click, like if this said buy now, right after they click buy now, or right after they click right here, buy now, it would display a little note on the center of your screen that says whatever you write here. So you could say, thank you for your purchase, something like this, right? Or whatever you wanna say. And then you can also do right here, the enable reviews button. I would leave this checked because this allows people to place reviews on your products. And so it's kind of the same thing as Amazon reviews. Like if we scroll all the way down, it basically you have the decision whether or not you're going to allow people to leave reviews, which obviously allowing reviews is a good idea because if you have a good product, you want people to tell other people that you have a good product. So people will be able to leave reviews on your website. That being said though, you get to censor and, and manage those reviews rather than just anyone being able to willy nilly paste something on your website. So in a hot second, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I mean. Okay, so now Cartflows, that's a third party app that gets downloaded with WooCommerce, but we're not gonna set that up. So just ignore this one and also ignore the last one. So we're done. The simple product, all you did was you added a price. You added, you basically created its stock keeping number and you're managing its inventory. You put in its weight and size and that's that's it, basically the first three. Right after that, you can put in the short description, which the short description is usually gonna be kind of like right underneath the title, like right here. It's kind of like, I mean, Amazon doesn't really do a short description, but it only does a product description. But I'll show you guys on WooCommerce when we actually paste the product. So I'll just do this, Control V, there we go. But what I'm gonna do is I'll put in short description. And then up here, I'll just put in product description. That way you guys know which one is which when I show you guys the product. Okay, so now everything in the main part is done. Now we can go over here to the right hand side and finish up. The first thing is you need a product image. I mean, that's kind of an obvious, like a given. We're gonna click select product image and then you can literally just select it from your computer. So I'm gonna go to upload files, select files. And inside of here, I've got all of my six products here and I created a bunch of pictures and I hope you guys appreciate all the work I did. I Photoshopped this into existence. So this is my simple product. It's a couch that we're selling and it's kind of ironic that it's actually the exact same as the icon. I did not plan that, but that's kind of cool. Let's go ahead and set our product image. This is the couch that we're selling. There's no variation. I don't have different colors. I don't have different sizes. It's just simply you buy it as is. Now, once you select the first main image, you can add secondary images, which I don't have any secondary images. I wasn't ready for this. So instead, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can just duplicate this in there. Okay, cool. Pretend this is a different picture or maybe it's showing the back and I'll show you guys what that means later. Next, we have the product categories, which again, we're gonna have to delete all of these the same way we deleted all of the products. Let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna click on update to save my work because now we're gonna go over here to categories. So under products, we've got categories. We're just gonna select all of them just like this and delete them all. Cool, and now we can create categories here, but it's a lot easier to do it while we're editing the products. So now that we've deleted them, let's go right back in to editing our simple product right here. So over here on the right-hand side, we just put in our picture and our product gallery, which I know it's pretend that's like a different picture, obviously, but I didn't prepare a second image. Anyways, under the categories, let's refresh the page really quickly. That's why I saved my work. And now you'll see that there are none available. So we're gonna click on add a new category. And so you know how like when you go over here to Amazon and they've got categories right here, here, clothing, books, movies, electronics, computers, smart home, games, all of this stuff. We're building those right here. So maybe I've got 
furniture. Or maybe I'll do couches. Let's just do that to be specific. Sofas, let's do sofas. I keep changing my mind. Okay, so sofas. And we're gonna say this is a parent category. Add new category. And then underneath sofas, if we wanted to get creative, we could say that we want leather sofas, if we wanted to be really specific. And then we would say that the parent category is sofas, add new category. Now watch this. It's gonna change it as a subsidiary of sofas. So now you can go to my website and look for sofas or you can only look for leather sofas. So I wanted to show you guys that's how you can make subcategories and categories. But uh, that being said, I'm probably not even gonna care about making other subcategories. I just wanted to show you how to make them. But now we have it inside of a category, so we're done. Let's move on down to product tags. Now product tags are really unique. On your website, if if we chose to do so, which I don't think it's here, yeah. Most of the time your website's gonna have a search bar on it somewhere on your website, which we can install one if we want to. And so when people search for things, you have to tell your website what this product is. So under tags, you basically wanna write down everything you can think of that applies to this product. So it's a sofa, it's a couch, it's leather, it's a large couch. Let's see, seating. Let's see, living room furniture, something like this. You basically wanna describe it with as many of these as possible because what you're trying to do is anticipate what someone would put into the search bar on your website. So if someone was like, huh, I'm searching for a couch today. I'm gonna to go up to that search bar and put in the word couch. You want your computer to realize that, hey, this product is a couch. Or if they're like, hmm, I'm looking for a leather something. I'm looking for leather furniture today. Then if they put leather into the search bar, this one's gonna pop up. So you're basically adding tags for your, your computer to look for when someone uses a search bar. I hope that makes sense. But anyways, if that didn't make sense, just think, I wanna put down every word I can think of that describes this product. Yeah, that's basically everything that comes to mind. Okay, so other than that, everything else is good to go. We can click on update, or originally you would just click on publish because you'd make all these changes all at once and you're done. Now this product is good to go. So we can go over to our website. And again, you can just hover over this and open it on a new tab, but it looks like I already had it open. We we go to our store page and would you look at that? We've got our uh, our single product right here. So it's a simple product. As you can see, it's under leather sofas as the category and it's normal price, if you remember, was $900, but I have it on sale for $800. And so you'll see the regular is crossed out and it's for $800. If that wasn't the case, if I didn't put the 800 right here, and I click update, and then I click on refresh on my website, you'll see that the regular price is just gonna display. Does that make sense? But uh, we'll, we'll say it's on sale for 800. So now I've got my simple product for $800 and I can leave stars on here if I want to. But anyways, now I'm gonna click on the product and I've got my detailed image picture on the left. And then as you can see, this is my product gallery. So I've got multiple pictures of the same product because I didn't have a second one. But as you can see, this is where you would search for, similar to Amazon, like these. This, it's like different pictures of the same product. So this is your main product image. And then these is this is your product gallery. And so that's what we just did right here. You guys remember when I had you guys put in the product image and the gallery. Okay, so we've got the main image here. We've got, remember the short description? Here's the short description right here. So that's where, uh, down below, that's where the short description goes, down here, right? So it appears right here. The long description appears at the bottom, long description. As you can see, product description, and I said product description right here. And then you've also got your SKU number. So if someone goes up to that search bar on your website and just puts in the SKU number, this product's gonna pop up. It's kind of like an ISBN number, like if you're looking for books or something like that. Then you also get your categories, which it's inside of leather sofas, as you can see, or sofas, it's popping up, as you can see. And then we've also got the tags, so that's pretty cool. And then it looks like right now it's saying free shipping, but that's because we haven't set up our shipping, so that'll probably disappear later. But anyways, as you can see, we also have the availability to add as many to it as as we want, right? Because we did not under inventory select the sold individually. So if I select sold individually and I click update, under the simple product, if I refresh the page, you no longer have the availability to add products to that. Uh, like I can't select three couches, I can only add one, right? But I'm gonna leave that off because this is not a virtual product. It's a simple product and I want people to buy as many as they want. Okay, and then also you can see the availability. It's gonna tell them how many you have in stock because remember, I said I have 200 in stock in my inventory? Yeah, inventory, I've got 200 in stock. It says I have 200 in stock, so that's pretty cool. And then they can add to basket and go to the checkout. Okay, so this is our first product. So we're gonna close out of this bad boy and we can close out of this one as well. And so now we're back on our WordPress dashboard. So we've created the first product. Let's go ahead and create the second one, which is a variable product. So again, we're gonna go to products and we're gonna say add new. 
And again, I'm gonna call this a variable product. Obviously, you wouldn't call this variable product on your website. You would call it what it actually is. I'm just doing this so that it's easy for you guys to see on the store which product is what. Okay, for the short description, again, you would put in all of the information, but all I'm gonna do is just copy this because I'm lazy and this is an example. <laughs> so we're gonna paste it a couple times to make like a thick looking description. Same thing for the short description. I'm just gonna put a little short blurb right there. All right, so now we need to change from simple product to variable product. And so now it's gonna tell you, as you can see, hey, don't forget to add attributes because it's a variable product and yeah, I got it. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so now we've got a variable product. We're gonna do the inventory. You'll notice that the first thing that changes is you can't just add a price right off the bat because we have to add prices inside of attributes. So variable product, you don't see uh, the general tab anymore. But under inventory, we're gonna make this 0, 0, 0, 0, but two instead. Because remember, this has to be unique to every product. If you ever don't know what something is, you can hover your mouse over that little help icon right here and you'll see an SKU refers to a stock keeping unit, a unique identifier for each distinct product to serve and service that can be purchased. So, okay, are we gonna keep inventory? And so you can say yes, and you guys already know how to do all of this. Do you wanna allow back orders? How much do you have in stock? What's your threshold? Let's just say I have like 200. Let's say 300, why not? Okay, so I've got 300 of these. Do I wanna allow back orders? No. Do I want a threshold? Let's say 20. And sold individually? No. I want people to buy as many as they want. Okay, under the shipping tab, it's the same thing. Put in the weight, put in the dimensions. I'm gonna let you guys do that. I'm not gonna do it again. Linked products, again, upsells and cross-sells. We're gonna skip this. Attributes, this is where it gets interesting and a little complicated, but not too hard. So first we have to add our custom attribute. And so I'm gonna say add. And so right now, as you can see, I can add two of them now. So I didn't realize that. We're gonna click on remove. Okay, so we're adding our first one right here. This is to add another one of these, it looks like. So the name is gonna be color. I'm not doing a t-shirt. So for instance, if you're doing a t-shirt, you might wanna add another one and do size. And this would be like small, medium, large, and this would be blue, yellow, green, or something like that, right? But we're gonna move that because all I do is color because I'm selling a sofa. And so we've got color, and then you want to enter the options for customers to choose from blue, large, whatever, and use this icon to separate the different options. So let me show you. So we're gonna say space, the long straight vertical line, Okay, so I've got all of my options listed out here and I want them to be visible and I want them to be used for the variations because once you create an attribute, you have to actually go in one by one and edit every single variation. Okay, so we're creating basically the category, which is color. And I said it's gonna be black, white, gray, red, blue, yellow. Under variations, let's click on save real quick. As you can see, it's it's still right here. Under variations, I have to go in there and edit individually what the black one is, what the white one is, what the gray one is, the red one, the blue one, the yellow. So basically when you're creating a variable product, you're actually creating like however many of these are. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm basically creating six individual products inside of one product. So I click on variations and now I have to generate variations automatically and so it's going to say do you are you sure you want to generate it and you're going to say yes it's going to say yep i created six of them okay so now it's pretty simple you got a black one a white one gray red blue yellow you can edit each one individually or you can just expand them all at the same time which is what i like to do and so now each individual variation we have to edit so we've got the black one let's add a stock keeping unit we can say 00003 and then this one will be 00004 for the white one and then here's the gray ones 00005 00006 0007, 0008. Okay, so that's all the variations. So that's the stock keeping unit. Next, I have to add the picture for each individual color. So I'll click on the upload image. I'm gonna upload them from my computer. I hope you guys appreciate my Photoshopping because <laughs> I photoshopped this same chair into a bunch of different colors. Nothing special, it's, I've just like felt fun. Okay, so we're doing the black one first. So now the black one has the black chair and then I can also set the price. So let's say the black one is gonna be like $500. And then you put in the weight, the dimensions, and then the description if you want. And then next we'll do the white one. Then I could set the price and let's say the white one is a little more expensive. So $550. And then you can put in the weight dimensions if you wanna put it on sale uh, and then add the description. So now we're gonna do the gray one. Let's say this is $490. And then you guys can put in all the info. Let's do the red one. I'm gonna go a little faster now that you guys can see what I'm doing. It's kind of just repetitive at this point. The blue one and the yellow one. 
Okay, and then we can save the changes. And so now we have made changes to all six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's six of them. So we made changes to all six of them. Each of them have the color, the picture, the everything, the price and everything. Okay, so now that we're done with that, we're gonna skip swatches because again, that's cart flows and we're not gonna do that. We can go over here to the advanced tab and if you wanna add a purchase note, you can. And then that's it. By the way, that's Cartflow's logo. That's how I know that Cartflow's, that's it. That's the logo to their company. Like if I search Cartflow's real quick, there's the logo, as you can see. So we're gonna go ahead and ignore this one and ignore this one because it's both cart flows and I'm not doing that. Okay, so now we're done with everything on the left-hand side. Let's go to the right-hand side and we have to add the product image. So all I'm gonna do is I actually am not gonna add gallery. I'm only gonna add the product image because this is the one that default is shown everywhere on my website. So you have to have a product image. I'll just choose the gray one as the default. And then anytime someone selects any of the variations, it'll change the picture color. It's really cool. So that's good to go there. We can go down here to product categories and we can add a new category and say, I don't know, armchairs. I don't know exactly what that is. I'm not the biggest furniture connoisseur. We're just doing this as an example for a web design tutorial. So don't, don't make fun of me if I call something by the wrong title. <laughs> okay, we're gonna say add chair or the armchair right there. Or I guess I could have just said chairs, but whatever. Okay, product tags, let's say chair just in case someone thinks this is a couch. I don't know. Seating, cloth, armchair, whatever. Okay, as many things as you can think of that would apply to this product. You guys get the idea. And when we're done, let's click on publish to save our work. All right, now it's live on the website. So let's go ahead and open up the website on a new tab and see what it looks like. So we'll go to the store tab. And now we have, again, remember, I told you you have to set at least one product image. And so whichever one I set here is what's gonna by default show on the website. But if you click on it, you've got your variation right here and so if they choose the black one it's gonna show the black picture and then white gray red blue and yellow so that's pretty cool right and then they can choose how many they want add it to cart they've got their descriptions it also says that the price obviously is gonna vary between 450 and 550 dollars when I select the black one it's 500 dollars the white one is 550 the gray one is 490 the red is 500 the blue is 450 and the yellow is is 500. So it's always going to tell them the exact price that they're paying. But if they don't have anything selected, they just know that this could cost anywhere from 450 to 550 dollars. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so that is the variable product. So we can now that we finished publishing, we can close out of that tab and we can start building the next one. So let's go over to the products tab, click on add new. And now we're gonna be building, let's check my list here. Okay, so the digital product is up next. So we're actually gonna call it the digital product. And then from here, we can just paste in the main description and I'm gonna paste in the description as well. Again, you would actually put in real descriptions. I'm just using placeholders. Okay, we're gonna change this. Uh, actually, for a digital, product, we're going to leave it as a simple product and then just select virtual. Because if you remember, a digital product is different from a downloadable product. A downloadable product, you can literally just download. It's like a PDF or a Word document or a picture, or it's a video that you can download. Whatever it is, it's a file that you download on your computer. A virtual product is basically going to have no inventory. You click here, you can put in your inventory, like the stock keeping number, and your, your stock management is essentially like you're keeping track of how many people have ordered this. Like, let's say there's five C in your Zoom call. Let's say you're doing like a seminar or something online. You could keep stock by saying, yes, track it. And there's only five seats available. You know what I mean? And then don't allow back orders. And you would want to say sold individually so that there's only five seats and you can only buy one per person. Does that make sense? And then this could be the next stock keeping number, which I'm going to start skipping this because I don't even remember what we're up to. I think we're like up to like nine or something like that. I don't remember what the variable product got up to, but you want to make sure you keep up with your stock keeping numbers. I'm just going to lazily not do that now. But under the general tab, you've got to set your price. So let's just say that this is a $200 online seminar, for example. And then of course, under the inventory, you've got this, the number of seats, essentially, because that's how many of this item you're selling. Link products, again, we're skipping. Attributes, again, we're skipping. The advanced tab is where you're actually going to want to have something. And this is the most important part of a virtual product. Your purchase note is what's going to tell them their next steps, because the second they click purchase, this is going to display. And so you might want to say something like, check your email for the link to the Zoom call. Okay, so again, when you build a digital product, the purchase note is very important because you're gonna say, thank you for your purchase. We look forward to seeing you in the seminar on June 20th at 5 p.m. Central. This is just an example. Like I'm saying, this is when the online seminar is. Please check your email for the login credentials to the meeting and be sure to arrive on time. So this is telling them, hey, I'm sending your email. Now, later on in the tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys that you will be managing, it's not automatic. You will be managing every single order that comes into your website, that being 
the case, you're gonna see when someone purchases a virtual product. So it's your job when you see this product to send them the email. <laughs> Don't forget to do that. It's not gonna be automatic. But I just wanted to show you guys that this is what the purchase note is used for. It's mostly used for virtual products. Okay, and then you're gonna skip cart flows and get extra, get more options because this is just like adding product plugins and things like that, which we're not doing. Okay, so for the digital product, you'll notice it's really easy to do. We'll go over here to the right hand side. We'll say add new category. Let's call uh, this one online seminars. Now it's inside of online seminars. If one product can go into multiple categories, you can select multiple categories, obviously. But obviously this is only gonna go inside of the online seminar. We've gotta select the product image. So let me go ahead and upload it. And I created one for this as well. And so this is Levi Hagen's interior design guide. And so this is my web seminar, right? I just created like a little thumbnail picture. And you guys can add gallery images if you want. We can add tags anything you can think of, and let's click on publish to save our work. Okay, instead of opening your store up like this, you can always just click on the preview changes button and it's gonna open up the product immediately on your website, which is kind of cool. And so as you can see, under online seminars as the category, we've got digital product, which again, you would make this a real title, but we've got our digital product for $200. You can only purchase one and there's only five seats left inside of this Zoom call or this seminar. And so you can add it to cart, purchase, and then when you do, it's going to tell you, hey, thanks for doing it. Go ahead and check your email for the login credentials. And so that's when you would send the email. But anyways, that is how you create a digital product on your website. Okay, so now that we clicked on publish, we can close out of this one. And let's get into the next one, which is a downloadable product. And it's pretty close to a digital product. It's just a little different. So let's go ahead and open this up on a new tab. Oh, uh, my bad. I clicked on all products instead of add new. So let's click on add new. So the downloadable product, we can go ahead and paste in our short or a description in our short description and then we can enter in the product data and we're gonna change this. Well, again, we're gonna keep it as a simple product and then select downloadable right here. And so you'll notice that when you click on downloadable, it adds download files right here to the general. So first let's go ahead and add a price and let's just say that this downloadable product is gonna be an ebook, for example, cause that's what a downloadable product would be is like a downloadable video or a downloadable book or a PDF or something like that. So I'm just pretending it's an ebook. Uh, let's just say it's like, I don't know, like a hundred dollar ebook that they can buy. I'm not even going to set a sale price. Downloadable files. You're going to say, here's the download file. You can call it by, you know, Levi Higgins ebook to interior design. That would be the title of the file. And then I can actually add the URL by literally just pasting it here. And then you can click, or you can just click on choose file and select it from your computer, which you would have to upload it, of course. So we'll close out of that. And then you guys can just upload your file right there. And then if you have multiple downloadable files, you can just click on add file. And as you can see, you're going to add a bunch of them. So there's that. Okay, so once you've added the file that you want to be downloaded, you can set a download limit and a download expiry. And so the download limit is basically gonna allow people to download this unlimited times, or if you only want them to be able to download it like three times or once after they purchase. So let's say they pay $100. I only want them to be able to download it three times. I feel like that's fair. It allows for a mistake. Like if they accidentally download it and delete it off their computer, they can download it two more times, but I don't want them to be able to just download this unlimited and then they can just hand it out to all their friends, right? Okay. So that's the download limit. And then the download expiry is just a number of days before the download link expires. And so maybe you want to give them, you know, 10 days to download the product from your website after they purchase it. And so you can set a number of days afterwards until they can't download it anymore. Okay. So that's pretty much the only thing you're going to do with downloadable products, because if you go over to inventory, there's no reason to track inventory. So you can basically just say if it's in stock or out of stock, just like this, which obviously it's in stock because it's downloadable and it's just easy. Set your SKU and you're done. You can also uh, sell it individually if you only want them to be able to download it or purchase it once, which honestly, if you're doing a downloadable product, you probably only want them to buy one because it's the same product, even if they buy it three times. So I would say uh, check this box to make it sold individually. But of course, everyone's situation is different. So maybe you have a special product you're trying to sell multiple times, up to you. But if you're doing a downloadable product, I would recommend limiting it to one purchase or one item per purchase. Anyways, so that's pretty much it. You set the price, you gave them the download file, and then you said that it's in stock. Other than that, there's no dimensions or weight because it's a virtual product. You could link to upsells and cross sells, which I'll show you guys how to do later. But other than that, there's no attributes, there's no advanced. I mean, you could put a purchase note if you really want to, but they've already downloaded their product after they click purchase. So there's nothing to write down for them. Other than that, we just go over here to the right hand side and we can add a new category. So let's just say eBooks if we want to. So add new category and then we can add tags, learning, e-learning. Yeah, we'll just keep it at that. And then we can set our product image, which again, I just Photoshopped something together 
so that we would have a product image downloadable. Here we go. Okay, and then we're gonna click on publish to save our work and make it live on our website. And now we can go ahead and open up our store and show you guys what it looks like. So now we've got the downloadable product, which obviously you would probably say ebook available or Levi Hagen interior design concepts ebook or something like that. They click on the product, they see, ah, there's the book that's poorly photoshopped, but whatever. So we've got the design concepts here by Levi, the downloadable product, we've got the price, the short description. You guys know what you're looking at at this point. Just wanna show you guys that that's what it looks like. And then also if you had more pictures down below, of course, and then obviously the reviews as well. And then someone can leave a review for you right here. So that's the downloadable product. Close out of those two, and now we can come back, we'll tab. Let's go ahead and add the next product, which I think is the affiliate product. So we're gonna click on add new, and let's create an affiliate product. Now an affiliate product is just a link to somebody else's product. Uh, you're selling somebody else's product and you're making a commission off of it. So the only requirements for an affiliate product would be an affiliate link. And then people will go and purchase that product on the other website. They're not even gonna pay on your website. So that's pretty cool. So it's really easy to make the affiliate product. And so again, we're just gonna put in the short description or whatever in the description, but you wouldn't wanna copy and, or you would want to copy and paste this directly from the client. So let's just pretend, let me search for a couch on here. Let's say that I am selling this product and I've become an affiliate with Amazon. What I would do is I would pull out my affiliate link, which you have to do by going down here and becoming an affiliate footer down here. So sell products on Amazon or sell, where is it? Become an affiliate right here. So you would say become an affiliate. You have to create an account with Amazon. And then anytime I look at a product, I can choose to click a button that says create an affiliate link. And it would basically give me a URL, but I'm gonna pretend like this is my affiliate link. It's not, but I'm just gonna pretend. So now, if we're creating our affiliate product, we would come down here and select external affiliate product. And the first thing you do is put in your affiliate link, just like that. And then you want your button text to say, buy on Amazon or buy now, or you know whatever you want it to say. But because it's affiliate link, it's gonna take them to Amazon, as you can see. And then you would set the price, which you wanna copy directly from the affiliate that you're selling it from. So if your affiliate link says that it's $1,619, then you come over here and say $1,619.99, just like that. And then if it's on sale, you would say it's on sale, but this one isn't, so we're not gonna do that. Basically, you're gonna copy and paste everything directly from your affiliate. So that means that my product description, control all, we're gonna delete that. We're gonna paste it from here. And then my short description, I don't think this Amazon, or I don't think Amazon have a, has a short description. Yeah, it doesn't really. So the short description you could probably just write yourself, so I'll leave it as dummy text. Okay, so so far the general tab, product description, and short description are done. We've copied everything over from our actual affiliate. Next we go to inventory, and we could just set up your SKU number. You could upsell from here if you want to, and again I'm gonna show you guys after this. Attributes we're skipping, advanced tab. Uh, there isn't even a purchase note because they're not gonna check out on your website. So external affiliate products are super easy to do. We'll go over here and set our product image, which honestly, I would just screenshot the real image from Amazon over here and just throw it over here. And so upload files, I already did that off camera. And so affiliate link, there's the couch. And so I've got my affiliate product image. And then we could say something like, actually, I don't need to add a new category because this is gonna go under sofas. And then I could add tags right here uh, and add as many as I want. And we're done. We can click on publish to save our work and let's go preview that product. So now on our website, people see, oh wow, this wouldn't say affiliate product. This would say something like brand new gray couch sectional, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, wow, I want this for $1,600. This is fantastic. And so you say buy on Amazon and it would take you straight to the product where they can check out. Now the way that you get paid by an affiliate product is this isn't just the link that I copy and pasted from up here, okay? You don't wanna do that. You have to grab the affiliate link from Amazon by becoming an affiliate. Remember I told you you have to create an account, become an affiliate you would create a special link that basically tells Amazon that if someone purchases this product through the affiliate link, not this link, it tells Amazon, oh, hey, you need to go get paid. And so Amazon will pay you. Whatever your commission rate is, it's gonna be a percentage or whatever. And so that's negotiated on you guys. So obviously Amazon is the example I'm using, but if you go to any website, you can basically go into their footer and most of the time they have some kind of an affiliate program. Uh, and I'll let you guys do your own research on how to do all of that. I just wanted to show you guys how to do it because this is not an affiliate 
legit marketing tutorial. This is just a WooCommerce tutorial. So I'm showing you guys how you would do it, but you guys need to go and figure out how to do it, obviously. So, but just make sure that this is your, your actual affiliate link. And so all of these numbers and everything back here is basically gonna be the code that Amazon knows that's special to you. That's kind of how it works, but anyways. So that's how you do an affiliate product. We're gonna go ahead and close out of that tab and we're done with the affiliate. We can view our store again. And so it's gonna pop up just like it would as any other product on your store, but when they actually go to check out, they don't have a checkout button. They have an Amazon button that takes them to your affiliate. Okay, so that was the affiliate product. So now the only product that we have left is the grouped product, which a grouped product isn't specially, it isn't a special product on its own. It's just like a group of other products you have on your website. That's all it is. And so let's call it the group product or grouped product. We could paste in our short description. Oh, whoops. Okay. I forgot. I copied that. So let's go ahead and control C this and we'll paste our dummy text in here as well as this one right here for the short description. So for the general tab, you'll set the price. So if this is a grouped product, it's gonna be expensive because it's a bundle. So let's just say out of all of the products on my website, I'm probably just gonna add the downloadable pro, eh, no, I'll do the variable and the simple product. So let's say 800 plus like 500, something like that, I guess. So down here under regular price, let's just say it's like 1300. Oh, well, let's, let's cut them a deal. So let's say it's 1200. So you save $100 if you buy it as a bundle. <laughs> You're not saving but $100, but whatever. So $1,200 is the price. My bad. I forgot we have to select grouped product right here. And so my bad, you actually don't even get to set a price. That's hilarious. So under grouped product, you just want to set a SKU number and then under for linked products, this is the only time you're ever going to use it for the actual group product. And so you'll click here and you've got to search your stuff. So let's search for simple. And so there's my simple product and then variable. And there's my variable product. But you would actually be searching like what the product is called, obviously, but that's the titles. You're basically searching the titles of your products right here. And so now that I've done that, you can go down here to advanced and there is not even a purchase note. Okay. So when you're done with that, you can go over here and set your product image. And so I have a special image that I photoshopped just to say that this is like a grouped product right here. Upload your own picture to your, but this is like the living room bundle. You get a couch and a chair. <laughs> It's not even a full living room, but whatever. You guys get the idea. So there's that. And then I would probably add my product gallery as this one and the gray one. Oh, hang on. I've got to add it. So add to gallery, add another product image to the gray one, add to gallery. So I've got both of my pictures here, publish. Oh, I'm jumping the gun. I totally forgot. You've got to add your category. So you probably want to put it into that and sofas. So it's chairs and sofas. You can even add a new category and be like bundles if you wanted to, or grouped packages, whatever. Product tags, you guys can enter in your tags. I'll let you guys do that on your own. Let's click on update to save. And now I wanna show you guys what happens when you actually check out the product. So now you've got your living room bundle. Oh, wow, it's, you know, 450 to $800. Wow, so I'm gonna click on this. And so you'll see the living room bundle is gonna include, now in the short description, you would obviously say it's gonna include a couch and a chair. And then down here, they can see the couch that's gonna be included and the chair that's gonna be included, right? And then over here, so obviously it would say couch and chair, but you would select how many couches you want, how many chairs or the, the variable product you want, and then you click add to basket and it's gonna add it based as a group product. So that's kind of cool. It's very rare you'll ever make grouped products on your website. Most of the time you're just gonna be selling simple and variable products, but I just wanted to show you guys that's how you would make one. Okay, and then we clicked on update and publish, so that one's done, and we have all of the products on our website. So now that we're done with that, we can move on to step number six, which is upsells and cross-sells. So now that we have all of our products available, we can move on to upsells and cross-sells. So now let's talk about how to insert upsells and cross-sells into your shop page. So in order to make upsells and cross-sells, we have to go back into our products. So I'm gonna open up all products here. We can close out of these two tabs. We don't really need them anymore. And so in order to make cross sales and upsells, you guys remember, we actually have to be editing the product. So let me click on edit right here for the simple product. Now we're back inside. We actually have to be editing it to be in linked, remember? And here's upsells and cross sales. So what are upsells and cross sales? Well, let me go ahead and add upsells and cross sales to this uh, product image right here. And then that way I'll be able to actually tell you guys exactly what they are by showing you, which is gonna be so much easier than trying to make it clear without doing that. But basically think about it this way. An upsell is gonna be on the page. It's gonna be on the product page before you view the cart. And then a cross sell is going to be in the cart, okay? So let me show you right now. So an upsell, let's say I want the variable product. And then for the cross sell, let's choose the ebook. Or that was the downloadable. 
Okay, and all we have to do is click on, where is it, update in the top. Okay, so remember, upsells are gonna be on the product page, cross sells are gonna be on the cart page. So now if I open up my store and pretend I'm a client, and I come down here to the simple product, and I scroll on down, now all of a sudden, whoa, this is down here, and it says, hey, you might also like this variable product. Like, hey, you're buying a sofa, you might also like this chair that's down here, right? An upsell is saying, hey, this is a product that's kind of related to the one you're buying, you might also wanna buy this one. So that's what an upsell is. You'll also see that you have related products, but so you might also like this one, so that's an upsell. Now, if I add this to cart and then I go to my cart, this is a cross sell. Hey, you might also be interested in this book, right? Because remember, I have the chair is on the actual product page. So here's the chair. And then if I go to my cart, on the cart is the cross sell right here, which is the ebook. And so here's the ebook. And so again, you can obviously add as many as you want. So if I want this to also be the digital product, I can add this one here. And if I wanted the variable product to also have the bundle, so grouped product and affiliate update, and then I can go back to my simple product. All of my upsells are gonna show up right here. So, hey, you might also like the bundle, the couch or the chair. And then if I actually go to my cart, you'll see that I might also be interested in what? I might also be interested in the digital and downloadable products. And so here it is, the digital and downloadable products right here. So that's how you do upsells and cross sells. Uh, that's why I wanted to actually build the products first so that I had something to link them to. But now you guys know, it's really easy to do. Um, now, obviously you'd wanna be smart about it. You'd wanna think, okay, they're buying a couch. Maybe they also are trying to furnish their entire living room. So maybe I should offer them the chair as well. Or maybe, hey, they're buying a couch. They might not know how to match the couch with other pieces of furniture. So maybe I should also, try and cross sell them on my ebook, which is the downloadable product. Uh, and that ebook will tell them, hey, if you're gonna use a leather couch, maybe you should use a cloth chair or, you know, however, I don't know the culture behind stylizing apartments or anything, but you guys get the idea. You'd wanna be smart about it, but that's how you do cross sells and upsells and that's where they pop up. So we will click out of both of those and go back to the dashboard. In this step, we're gonna be customizing your shop page. We'll be playing around with the customizer to make changes to the WooCommerce tab. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Over here on the left-hand side, we're gonna go over to the appearance tab and then click on customize again, similar to how we were editing the header, footer, and logo, but this time we're gonna be using it to edit the shop page. So let's go ahead and click on the store page. And then from here, we're gonna go over to the WooCommerce tab, which is where we can make all the changes to our shop page. So let's click on WooCommerce, just like this. And the first tab, we're literally just gonna go straight down the list. So the first tab that you can click on is the general tab. And so the general tab, you can change the container layout, which right now it's on content box. And so it's inside of this white box right here. You can do container full width or contained full width like this. And so now that box is gone. You could do stretched, which I think looks bad. <laughs> it actually looks really bad, but you can do it if you want to. Personally, I think I think content box or content full width contained looks the best. I'm actually gonna leave it as full width contained. I think that looks the best. So we'll click on the back button here. Oh, we haven't enabled it yet, but that's also where you would change like the layout of the sidebar. And you guys can play around with if you want it on the right hand side or the left hand side or no sidebar. So actually if I click on right sidebar, it should throw it up there. Yeah, and it's just, there's nothing on the sidebar, but now it's on the right or I could have it on the left, but I'll just leave it as no sidebar for now. Well, default, and we'll, we can add a sidebar later if we want to, okay. So from here, we can go to the products catalog. And so under the product catalog, we basically have container and sidebar layout again. Not sure why, it's basically the same things. So if I choose boxed, it's gonna put it back in box and everything. So I'm just gonna leave those two the way that they are. But if you scroll on down, we've got the shop layout where you can choose how many columns. So right now there's three, uh, but I could choose it to like four columns. So something like this, or I could go down to like two if I wanted to, but I'm gonna go back to three because I think that looks fine. And then on top of that, you can also choose how many products per page. And so right now, I only have six products total. So uh, I think the default is nine, but if I change this to three, you'll see that there's only gonna be three products and now I've got multiple pages. So that's an example of if you had more products than just six, you can choose how many are gonna be displayed per page. But again, I only have six total. You can also choose a custom width so you can kind of drag this and make it bigger or smaller. I think the default looks fine on its own, but you guys can play around with your custom width if you want. Next, we've got the shop display options. So we've got, what does your shop look like? So anytime someone clicks on this store button, do I want it to just show the products or do I want it to show categories? And so it's gonna show all the categories that I created. And obviously you would wanna put pictures into all of these categories, but do you want it to show the categories? And then they could click on armchairs and then see the products that are inside armchairs. 
or do you want it to show categories and products? But I'm just gonna say products because I think that looks much better. The category display, you can choose the same thing if you want it to show products, subcategories, or products, and subcategories. And then we've got the default product sorting, which you guys can pick how you guys want it to sort the products on here. If you want it by price, by rating, by everything. So, and then lastly, we have the card structure, which is basically the order of all of this stuff. So right now we're showing ratings, title, category, and price. If I don't want the category to show, I can just click the eyeball. There we go. I can just click on the eyeball. I just took me a second there. And now it's not going to show. I could reorder everything. So if I want the title to be first and then the rating to be second, which I think looks better, then I can just drag and drop everything that I want. You can also include the short description, but that would get pretty packed as you can see. So there's no point. You could add an add to cart button though. So that's kind of cool. So at least now when everyone's on the store, they don't even have to click on the product. They just say add to basket right there. So that's kind of cool. So we'll click on the back button. Let's go ahead and click on publish to save our work so far. Next, we've got the single product page. So if we open up a single product, let's go to the simple product that I have as an example here. We can choose the layout again and the sidebar layout as well. And then the single product structure. So right now, as you can see, we've got category on top, then title, then price, category, title, ratings, and then price, short description, add to basket, metadata. This is all the metadata. So if you actually wanna have all of this disappear, you can just hide the metadata. So something like this. And so now it's a little bit cleaner if you want to, but I'm just gonna leave it. So you guys can choose how you guys want your cards to show up here. You can enable your breadcrumbs and your shipping text and everything. Right now your shipping test says free shipping. So that's why it says it up here. We could just remove that if we want to, or we could just turn it off. And then now there's no shipping text right there. And that's about it. So we'll click on publish here and go back. Then we've got the basket settings. And so if we go to our basket, Right here, you can change the basket button. So buy now, you can say check out maybe. Check out, so you guys can change the text right there if you want to. And you can choose whether or not to enable the cross cells at all right here. And then we've got the checkout page. So now if they click on checkout, this is what they see here. And you guys can choose what lines are optional or required if you want to. And then you can also set up your privacy policy right here. And you can also select which page is gonna be your terms and conditions and privacy policy page. And so if you guys wanna create those, let me show you guys how right now. You can go back to the dashboard and you'll go over to pages and you literally have to add a new page just like this. And you would say privacy policy, or let's say terms and conditions. Publish it. And then you guys would actually come in here and actually type out your terms and conditions. <laughs> this is just an example. So I'm not gonna write out a bunch of terms and conditions. But now that I've created the page, I can come back in here to the customizer. Let's refresh the page. And we'll go back into, Woo oops, we'll go back into WooCommerce, back into the checkout page settings. And now I can choose my terms and conditions page is gonna be right here, the new page that I just created, terms and conditions. And so now anytime someone clicks on the terms and conditions button, let's see right here. So anytime someone says, yep, I've read them, they can click on this right here and it'll take them to the page, which is nothing at the moment, but you guys can write out your own terms and conditions, obviously. But we'll click on publish to save our work. You can do the same thing with the privacy policy page and then the terms and conditions. You can literally change the text. So if I go back to the checkout page, you can literally change this text right here. I have read and I agree with the website terms and conditions right here. You can change what that says, but I mean, the default is fine on its own. All right, so next we have the miscellaneous tab, which honestly we're just gonna skip because it's quantity plus and minus, which we don't need to do. And then we've got our product images, which we can basically just adjust the size of our product images if we want to, or right now they're set to square, but we can set them to custom or uncropped, which I would not do uncropped because then you have to manually crop all your pictures. I would just save it as the one-to-one -one, so that way everything is perfectly cropped into a square. And then we've got our store notice. And so if you enable it, it's basically gonna put a banner across the top of your store right here. And then you can give a store notice. And so you're noticing, your, you're letting your customers know about something. And so you could say, this is a demo store for testing purposes. No orders shall be fulfilled. You could also change that to be something like, hey, we've got a new sale on sofas today. You know, whatever you guys wanna put up here. And that is how you can customize your shop. Are you trying to get paid? I know I am. Let's make sure you can get paid by setting up payment methods on your website so people can pay you with credit card and PayPal. Let's get started. Okay, so from your WordPress dashboard, we're gonna go over to WooCommerce and we're gonna drop down to settings, which I'm gonna open up on a new tab. And then from here, what we're gonna do is go over to the payments tab. And so the payments tab is how we're gonna install everything that we need to be able to accept credit card as well as PayPal. Now you'll notice that we have Stripe card processing right here here, but we don't have PayPal. And so what we're gonna have to do is install a plugin or two to make sure that this works. So first thing we're gonna do is go over to plugins and then click on add new. And from here, we're gonna search for Stripe. 
And so the first one that we're gonna download is right here, WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway. And so we're gonna install this and then we're gonna activate it. Perfect, and then I'll go ahead and go back to the plugins tab. We'll click on add new. And then this time we're gonna go up to the search bar and search for PayPal, just like this. And again, the first option that's gonna pop up is WooCommerce PayPal payments. And so we're gonna install this one and also activate it. And so both of these plugins are gonna work, they're by WooCommerce, so they're officially by the same app that we're already using. And these basically just have integrations with PayPal and Stripe. Now Stripe, you can basically think as credit card and debit card, and PayPal is obviously PayPal. So now let's go ahead and go back to our WooCommerce settings and refresh the page. And you'll see that now we still have Stripe processing right here, but now we have a whole bunch of other options with Stripe as well as PayPal right here. So let's go ahead and set up PayPal first because it's so much easier. And so all you have to do is just check the enable box right here. So let's enable PayPal just like this. And so now all you're gonna have to do is click on activate PayPal right here and you'll be prompted to log into your PayPal account. So go ahead and give me a hot second here. Okay, and so after you sign into your PayPal account, you'll be asked if you want to authorize WooCommerce to use your PayPal, you say connect, and then you're just gonna have to click on save changes and you're done. And so now just make sure that your toggle switch is enabled and save changes right here as well and you're good to go. So next we have to set up our credit card and debit card through Stripe. And so right here, we're just going to enable Stripe. And then we're immediately gonna be prompted to create an account with Stripe. And so all you have to do is click on connect or create an account. And so you'll be redirected to Stripe's main website. And from here, you can enter in your email. And then once you guys put in your email and password, it's gonna ask you to kind of talk about your business a little bit. And then finally, you'll be taken to your dashboard, which is right here. Now, what we're gonna do from our Stripe dashboard, you wanna make sure that you have that tab that we were just on right here to create an account. You wanna make sure you have both of these tabs open because we're gonna be jumping back and forth a lot, okay? So bear with me here. Next, instead of clicking on create an account, now that you already have one and you're on your dashboard, what you're gonna wanna do is go over here to enter account keys. And you'll see that there's three different things that we need. We need a live key, a secret key, and the webhook secret, okay? We're gonna do this twice because we have the live and the test. So this is the test publishable key, secret key, webhook, and then we have the live publish key, secret key, and webhook, okay? You wanna make sure that if you're in live or test mode over here, that you're in live or test mode over here on your dashboard as well, okay? So first what we're gonna do is test test to make sure it works, and then we'll switch over to live. So let's go ahead and start by switching this into test mode, and we'll also make sure that test mode is enabled on our Stripe dashboard. And from here, we're gonna go to the developer tab, and from here, we're gonna go over to API keys, and we're gonna copy the publishable key right here. All you have to do is click to copy it, and you can paste it right here. All right, and then next, we're gonna come back and grab the secret key, so you have to reveal it and then copy it, and it's blurred out for obvious reasons. So let's go back to our WooCommerce tab and paste it right here as well. And finally, we have to get the test webhook secret. And it's really easy to get a webhook as well because these are APIs and now we need a webhook. First, we have to copy this endpoint link right here. So controller command C. We're gonna go back to our dashboard. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna go over to the webhooks tab right here. And what we just copied, we're gonna end up using. So keep it in your clipboard. So from webhooks, you're gonna click on add an endpoint right here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna paste the endpoint URL right here. So controller command V just like this. And then we're gonna click on add endpoint. Oh, my bad. So we also have to create events. That's my bad. So we're gonna click on select events and we're only gonna use the charge function right here. And we're gonna select all of the charge functions. And as you can see, inside of this whole thing that we're copy and pasting, it took all of the charge events and placed them in here. We'll click on add events. And now finally, we can select add endpoint. Okay, so now while we are waiting for the events to load, we can actually come right up here and copy our webhook and we can come back into WordPress and we can paste it right here, controller command V, and we can save the keys. All right, and now all we have to do is click on save keys and we are good to go. Okay, so now that we have our credit card up and running through Stripe, and we also have our PayPal enabled, which as you can see down below, it's enabled. So we've got Stripe and PayPal. Let's go ahead and test out our payment systems on our website. So we'll open it up on a new tab. And it looks like I already have the simple product in my cart. So let's go ahead and click on checkout. And you'll see over here on the right hand side that we have two options. We've got PayPal down below and we have credit card right here. And you'll see that the credit card is in test mode right here. And that's because we have test mode enabled on here as well as inside of our website. So what we can do is as you can see, we can just copy this card number right here. 
And then it doesn't matter what we put here. So I can just say one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and we can go ahead and place the order. Now, obviously I have to put in this information. So give me a second. All right, and now you can see that the order has been placed on our website. And that was by using the test credit card, obviously, so nothing is gonna go through on my Stripe account over here. So now we've confirmed that it definitely works if we have our Stripe hooked up to our website, and now it's in test mode though. So we can also go and double check our PayPal, which we're gonna do in a second, and then afterwards we have to come back, turn off test mode inside of our website and on Stripe. And then we're gonna have to reapply our API keys as well as the webhook endpoints. So we'll do that in just a second. First, let's make sure that our PayPal account is gonna work through the store. So let me go ahead and add the simple product again. We're gonna add it to cart and then we can check out. And this time, instead of using the fake card number through test mode with Stripe, we're gonna drop down to PayPal and we're gonna click on it. And, ah, okay. I just forgot to accept the terms and conditions. So now we can click on PayPal again. And as long as you're taken as a redirect to PayPal so that you can actually pay, that's how you know that PayPal is working. So I'm not gonna go ahead and do a fake PayPal account because I don't wanna pay myself, but as long as you get redirected to PayPal, you're good to go. So from here, we're gonna close on out. And now back inside of our WordPress WooCommerce settings, we have to go back into Stripe. So let's go ahead and click on manage on the right-hand side. And then we'll go over here to the dashboard as well on the developer tab for our Stripe account. And from here, we'll go back to the payments tab. Oh, my bad, we were just there. So let's click on manage. We'll go over to settings and from here we can edit our account keys. So I'm going to click on edit account keys. And from here, instead of using the test mode, we're going to swap back over to the live mode and let's do the exact same thing in our Stripe developer dashboard. So now we are not in test mode. This is live payment we're dealing with now. And from here we can enter in the publishable key, the secret key, and then also the web hooks. So let's go ahead and pull those now. We're gonna jump over in the developer tab to the API keys. And you guys already know the drill. We can just click on it to copy it to clipboard and we can paste it into our website. Same thing with the web hook secret. And then we're just going to paste the secret key into the website. And lastly, we just need the webhook secret. And so from here, we'll go back over to the webhooks tab and we literally have to add the endpoint again. So let's go ahead and copy this bad boy right over to our Stripe account again add the endpoint, we will paste the URL right here, and then we have to select the events. So we're gonna choose all four, well, here we go, 13 events of the charge events. And then we can add the endpoint. And while those are adding, we can go ahead and copy the webhook and paste it into our website. And finally, we can click on save live keys. Okay, so now we've double checked that our credit card payment system is in live mode. And then we can also double check right over here that test mode is disabled on our Stripe account. So everything is live and ready to go. And so now you are able to accept payments on your website. Finally, we're gonna click on save changes in the bottom corner just to double check that everything's been saved. But other than that, your payment systems and payment methods are all good to go on your site. Everybody loves coupons, right? I know I do. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to add coupon codes to your website. All right, so now what we can do is start talking about coupon codes and in order to do that, we're gonna go over here from our WordPress dashboard to the marketing tab right here, and then you'll see coupons right here. So we're gonna hover our mouse over marketing, click on coupons, and I'm gonna bring it up on a new tab. So from here, what we can do is click on create your first coupon because we don't have any available yet. And it's kind of similar to creating a product. You'll notice that you can add the coupon code, like the, the actual code that someone has to type in. And then we have a description and then just a couple settings. That's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and try creating a coupon right now. I think the first one I wanna try doing is like a 20% off coupon code. So let's just say 20 off. 20 off is the coupon code that someone types in and they'll get 20% off of their order. So we can actually put that right here. So this gives you 20% off of any order. And so we'll go down here to the settings and under the general tab, the first one we have is discount type. And so we can choose if we want this to be a percentage or a fixed amount off of the cart. So like instead of 20% off, if I wanted to do $20 off of any order, I would do a fixed amount from the cart. But what I'm doing is percentage discount. So we'll click on percentage right here. And then we can actually say, what is that percentage? And let's say it's 20% off. So just like this. And then we can ask if we want this to also include allowing free shipping or not. I guess you can just include this with almost every 
coupon you want, but I'll show you guys how to make a dedicated free shipping coupon code in just a second. So I'm gonna leave this off. And then you can also set an expiration date if you want. So obviously whenever this coupon can't be used anymore. Next, we have some conditions, uh, but they're called usage restrictions. And so you can set a condition of like a minimum or a maximum spend. And so you have to spend a minimum of, you know, $500 to get the 20% off, or you have to spend a maximum of $500. Otherwise, if you spend more than $500, you can't get 20% off. So that's like the minimum and maximum spend. Individual use only is basically if you tick this box right here, this can't be used in conjunction with other coupons, as you can see right here. So if you don't check this box, which I would recommend doing on pretty much all of your coupons, unless a free shipping, unless you have like a free shipping coupon and you want it to be able to be used along with another 20% off, like that's okay, completely up to you. I'd recommend doing this all the time just so that people can't find a bunch of coupons and try and get a bunch of free stuff from you. But that's just my recommendation. You can also see right here, exclude sale items. And so if you take this one and check it, it basically means that this coupon does not apply to any items that are on sale. So if you guys remember, some of my products are on sale, I believe. Let's see here. Yeah, here we go. So the simple product, remember how I placed it on sale? The original price is $900 and now it's off for $800. If I had this in my cart, as well as the digital product, so 800 plus 200, you would only take off 20% from the 200 because this is on sale. So it's excluded from the percentage discount, if that makes sense. So you'd only get 20% off of 200 and then you'd still have a solid 800 right there. So that is how you can exclude sale items if you want to, which I'll leave that one checked as well because you're already giving them a discount on a sale item. So there's no reason to give them two discounts on the same product. You can also choose if you want this product to only be applicable to a specific product. And so I could search for, you know, my simple product and say this only works on one product, or I could say this works on every product except for this one. And I could put it right here. Same thing applies for categories. So I could say it only applies to this category, leather couches, or I can exclude. So it only, it applies to everything except for the leather couch category, for example. And then finally, we have the usage limits. And so we've got the limit per coupon. So this is basically how many times total this coupon can be used by anyone anywhere. And then we've got down here, the usage limit per customer or per user, which means how many time a individual person can use the coupon. So if I set this to 50, that means that this coupon in general can only be used 50 times total on my website. And then if I put over here, one, this basically means that everybody can only use this coupon once, if that makes sense. That way people can't use the coupon over and over again. And then this last one, usage or limit usage to X items is basically how many items in the cart you want the item or the coupon to apply to. So maybe you only want 20% off the first five items in your cart, then you would say the first five items right here but I'm gonna take that off. Okay, so once you guys are done making your coupon, you can click on publish just like this and you're good to go. Now the 20 off is applied. So if I go ahead and open up the store really quickly and let's just add the simple product to my cart, which it looks like it's already in there so I can reduce it in a second. Let's go view the basket and I'm going to reduce it and update. That way it's only one. And so from here, I can go ahead and apply my coupon code. So let's say 20 off just like this, apply coupon. And if I click on apply coupon, you'll see that it is not gonna work. Oh, let me try it again. You'll see it's not gonna work because I accidentally chose the one item on my list that is on sale. So let's go ahead and remove this item and we'll go back to the store and choose the book, for example. And now I'm going to try and check out with 20 off. And now when we click on apply coupon, you'll see that I am getting $20 off of 100, which is 20% off, obviously. And so now I'm paying $80 and then I could check out. So it looks like that coupon code is working. So let's go ahead and go back to the store. I'll add the downloadable product again for $100 and we'll go back. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add a new coupon. And this time let's try doing a free shipping coupon. So what we'll do is we'll just call it free shipping. Okay, so this gives you free shipping on any order over $100. Let's actually say any order over $200. Okay, so free shipping on any order over $200. We're gonna say that this is a, let's see, doesn't really matter which one we choose because we're not gonna actually put a couponing amount. We're actually just gonna say free shipping, that's it. And then from here, we can go over to the usage restriction and we say it has to be a minimum spend of $200. So that's pretty simple. And then I'm gonna leave all the other boxes unchecked because I just don't care. The whole point is just showing you guys how to do free shipping for a minimum spend of $200. We're gonna click on publish. And again, you guys know that you can do the same usage restrictions if you want to, but we're not going to. So now if I go to my website and I go to my cart, I gotta go view my cart. Okay, you'll see that I'm only spending $100. So if I try and do free shipping, 
it's not gonna work because I don't have a minimum spend of $200. So let's go ahead, go back to the store and add, let's just say the simple product. Now we'll check our cart out again. If we do free shipping again, You'll see that now the free shipping coupon has been applied. And so actually we haven't set up shipping methods yet because that's actually the next step in this tutorial. But you guys would see that the shipping cost would be zeroed out. As you can see, the minimum spend is definitely in effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of that tab and let's go ahead and add one more coupon just as an example. And we'll do something as $20 off. So we'll just call this 20 off, which actually I think I just did that. So $20 off. $20 off. I'm not even gonna put a description. You guys know what it does. It gives you $20 off of your thing. So this time we're gonna do a fixed amount off of the cart. So a fixed discount from the basket. And we're gonna say it's gonna be $20 off. And then we can check if we wanna do a minimum spend or anything like that. Individual use or sale items doesn't really matter. And usage limits, you guys can pick if you want it, how many times in general and how many times per customer. But we'll just click on publish to show you guys. And now if I go over to my store page, I can type in $20 off. And now you'll see that it has removed $20 from my $900 bill. That's a terrible discount, but <laughs> you guys get the idea. So that is how you can add discounts to the back end of your website. You can also look at the overview. There we go. You can also look at the overview of your coupons, not by clicking on overview, but literally click on coupons. And you can see the list of all of your coupons on your website. And you can also see the expiration date and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete all three of them so there's nothing on my site. And I have a fresh website with no coupon codes. Your site's almost done. At this point, we just need to set up some shipping methods so that you can actually get your products to your customers. Now, you're the one who's gonna actually take care of shipping on your own, but I'm gonna make sure that you guys know how to charge your customers shipping fees. So here we go. From your WordPress dashboard, we're gonna go over over to WooCommerce and drop down to settings again. And again, I open it up on a new tab. And from here, we're gonna go over to the shipping tab. And now you can either click up here, add shipping zone or add shipping zone down here. Both of them are gonna take you to the same place. So I'm gonna click on add shipping zone. And so now first we're gonna name it and then we're actually gonna designate it to a real location. So first I'm gonna name it and let's just do United States. And then I'm actually gonna designate the United States as my zone. So you can click right here and you can scroll down and select, but I'm gonna go ahead and start typing United States right here. And notice that after I typed in United States, I've also got all of the different states inside. And so you don't just have to do United States as a whole. You could say, okay, so to Kansas, it's gonna be $20 shipping, but to Maine, it's gonna be $30 shipping. And then uh, to Montana, it's only $5 shipping and, and so on. So you guys can get as complicated as you want with your shipping methods, depending on you know your business and what you guys are doing. I'm just gonna show you guys as the country as a whole. So anywhere in the United States, it's gonna be this set price. Okay, so now that we've titled it and we've designated an actual geographic zone, we can move on to actually creating methods for it. And so first you have to add it and then you can edit it. So I'm going to add one of three. Actually, it's gonna be one of two because local pickup is self-explanatory. It just means they're gonna literally come and pick it up from you. So there's not really any reason to charge them for it if they're gonna come and pick it up. So I'm not gonna do this because also most of you guys building a website as a beginner are just gonna be selling product out of your house, I bet. You don't actually have like a real store that you're selling out of, it's what I'm assuming. But anyways, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a flat rate and then also free shipping. So let's do flat rate. And and now that I added it, I can edit it. So I'm gonna click on edit and you'll see that the method title is flat rate, which you guys can change to whatever you want, but I'm gonna title it standard shipping. And then from here, we can ask if we want it to be taxable or not, which I'm just gonna say no. And then afterwards, we've got the cost right here. And so we can say that anywhere in the United States, I'm just gonna charge $10 for shipping flat rate. And we can click on save changes. And so that's how you make a flat rate. And so if you wanted to make a flat rate for Texas, like let's just say for some reason, it costs you more to send to Texas and you know exactly how much it costs you, then you would just come over here and you would add another shipping zone to Texas. You would specify it's Texas and then you would set that price to be different. So now let's go ahead and add another shipping method, but this time we're gonna do free shipping. So let's add it and then we can edit afterwards. And so I'll leave the title as free shipping. And so what does free shipping require? Do you want a valid free shipping coupon, a minimum order amount, one or both? And so what I'm gonna do is a minimum order amount. And so if anyone on my website spends more than let's just say $1,500, cause I'm selling furniture, which can be expensive. If anyone spends more than $1,500, then they get free shipping, no matter what. They don't even need a coupon code. It's just, that's what you get. Cause you're spending so much 
much money with me, I'll cover the shipping cost. Now, the last thing that you can check is this little checkbox right here. And so basically your coupon discount. So do you wanna apply the minimum order rule before the coupon discount or after? And so I always recommend leaving this box unchecked because basically what it's saying is if someone were to spend $1,500 on your website, so they get free shipping, and then they apply a coupon that says, you know, $200 off. So now they're down to $1,300. Can they still get free shipping even though they're not spending the 1500? And I'm gonna say no. You have to spend $1,500 with me, even without, or even with a coupon before you get free shipping no matter what. And so that's what I'm gonna do. We'll click on save changes. And so now we've got two different shipping methods. We've got standard and free shipping right here. If you wanted to, you could also add another one. So you could do like a flat rate. And then this time you could say something like express express shipping and you could say that this is going to be more like $25 or something like that and then you can make sure that you guarantee that it's going to be there uh where is it yeah so standard free and express and then express shipping you'll just guarantee that it's going to be there within two or three days rather than taking like 10 or something like that so that's just to show you guys you have different methods okay so now that we've got our shipping methods ready to go let's go ahead and test them out by going to our store let's go ahead and open it up on a new tab here and so right now we've got let's see $900 worth of product in our cart and so if we go over here, you'll see that they only have two options, standard shipping and express shipping. And so if they wanna pay the standard, it's only $10 and it'll take a little bit longer to get there to wherever this is, which it looks like it's in Texas, or they can pay for express shipping, which is $25 and they'll get the express shipping and I'll make sure I take care of that in managing my orders later. Now let's go ahead and just add one more couch and update the cart. And so now I'm spending, you know, $1,700. All of a sudden the free shipping option pops up. So instead of charging them $10 for shipping, so instead of $710, they actually can do free shipping for $1,700. So I wanted to show you guys that that threshold is going to pop up and the, the option will pop up or be invisible depending on how much money they're spending, obviously, on your website. Now that we know those shipping methods work, we can go ahead and close out of this tab and go back to the WordPress dashboard. All right, so now that you have a fully functioning e-commerce website at your fingertips, I'm going to show you guys how to manage orders and fulfill them on the back end of your website. Fulfilling orders and also managing all of the orders that you have is going to be one of the most important duties that you have now that you finish building the entire site. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so from your WordPress dashboard, we're going to go over to the WooCommerce tab right here and we're going to click on orders. And you can already see that I have a notification right here already popping up saying that I have one order already started. And if you remember a little while ago when I was doing the credit card testing, that's what it was, we placed an order while we were testing out the payment method. And so this is the order and we can see that it was placed about an hour ago by Levi Hagen. It's currently in processing and it's for $800 right here. And so also you'll notice that in my inbox, I have an email and it was from about an hour ago saying that I have a new order from my website. And so it says it's from me because the admin email that's my Gmail is also the one that's on my website. So normally it would say it's from, you know, CAPW interior design, but it's the same email. <laughs> So that's kind of funny. But anyways, we open it up and it says, hey, you've got a new order, Levi. You got to go ahead and fulfill it. It's for a simple product, $800, all this information, right? Okay, so uh, it's funny because this is also the client email. But we'll go over here and we've got the order, right? And so what we can do is we can click on it to open the order and we have all of the information provided below. So you can see that we see their billing information as well as their shipping address, which it looks like I forgot to put a shipping address when I placed the order because I was just trying to place a test order. But you guys get the idea. There would be a shipping address right here. Same thing as uh, basically probably looking the same as the billing address right here. Obviously all fake information, it would be real in real life because someone needs their product to be sent to them, but you guys get the idea. You already have their contact information. So this is their email address and their phone number right here. And you'll notice that the reason that it says it's from me is because the admin email that I use to create this website is also the customer email. So that's why, but you've got their contact information right here and you can see the order status and everything right now. What you need to do whenever you're processing these orders is if this was a digital or downloadable product, I mean a downloadable product, all you would do is just come over here to processing and change it to completed because there's nothing for you to do after they purchase it there's going to be a download button and they can literally just download the product just like that now what a digital product would be is you'd want to make sure that you see this order and you'll see that they paid for the digital product so my online course and that means that I would personally need to make sure that I reserve their seat inside of my Zoom meeting, right? But other than that, there's nothing else you're gonna do on WordPress. So you would just come over here and click on completed. Now, if this was a simple product, for example, which it is, I need to ship this product to the client. So I would take their shipping address and I'd go out and get my shipping label and I'd come back and then I would send it off through whatever service you guys are using to ship your products. And then you'd come back in here and you'd change it to completed and you would say update just like this. 
And now that it says update, you'll notice that if I go back to my Gmail and I refresh, I'm gonna have a, new, oh, I should have hit refresh right here, that's funny. You'll see that I have a new email that says your capwinteriordesign.com order is now complete. And you'll see if I click on it, it's gonna say, thank you, we finished processing your order, your order's on the way, this is how much you spent, your address and everything, right? And so it's really cool to see that every time you make a manual change inside of your website while you're managing their order, they're automatically getting emails. And you can see the order notes here as well. So over here, if I were to change something to refunded, for example, and I were to click update, then I would instantly get an email that says, hey, your order has been refunded. And so every time you make a change and click update, it's gonna email and notify the client based on what you're doing, which is really cool. So again, every time you guys get new orders, you're gonna have to log back into your website, into the back end. You come down over here to orders, and you'll see all of the new orders that you have. And one by one, you're just gonna click on them and see what they ordered. So he ordered a simple product. So I would, you know, put the simple product in a box, get my shipping label, send it to him, and then I would change it to completed. If it was digital or downloadable, obviously I would just switch it straight to completed and make sure that they have a spot in my online course. And so you guys get the idea. So with that being said, we're pretty much done. You've got a completed e-commerce website. You know how to manage your orders. You know how to get all the shipping methods, the payment methods all done. We've customized the site. All the products are up on there. It looks fantastic. Let's take one final look at the website. Just gonna open it up on a new tab, just like this. We've got the really cool section background with that slideshow, which I freaking love. We already changed our text and everything, and this button takes you to the shop. And we scroll on down, we've got our featured products, which actually I'm glad I came through for a final site review because I totally forgot about our featured products. Let's go ahead and go back into Elementor and make those changes right now. So we'll open up Elementor here. And if we scroll on down, you'll see that there's some short code right here that if we don't accidentally drag it somehow, if we click on it, you'll see that over here, we've got products, limits, six, columns. It's a whole bunch of short code. Honestly, it would be too much of a pain to try and figure out how to insert your category names without accidentally messing up short code. So what we're gonna do is actually just delete this really quickly. And instead for featured products, what we're gonna do is actually download one final plugin. I totally forgot to do this. So I'm glad that I did a final site scroll through just to double check my work and we're gonna look for something called essential add-ons. Essential add-ons for Elementor. It's gonna be the first option that pops up right here in the top left corner. And we really only need one widget from this app. But basically what this app does is it adds 40 additional plugins that you can use inside of Elementor. So now that you've downloaded it, you can literally just close out of the tab. Let's click on update to save and we have to refresh this page so that Elementor refreshes with the new plugin installed. And now what we can do is we can just search for a product, or just search product like this. And you'll see that EA stands for essential add-ons. We've got a product grid right here. Now, Elementor stock, the free version, doesn't come with a product grid. You have to pay for it. It's a premium version right here. So I kind of have a workaround by using the essential add-ons plugin and I get a free product grid. And so now I can click on it and, or drag it into place. And now you'll see that I've got my featured products right here. And so I've got my layout, which I'm honestly not gonna change too many things about this. I just wanted to show you guys that this is how you would add uh, these products here. Go ahead and Honestly, we don't really need this button anymore. So I'm just gonna right click and say delete because it looks like it already comes with the view products buttons here. And so the only thing I would do is probably just click on the pencil icon and I can choose probably, let's see how many columns there are. So there's four columns right here. And I could probably go over here to product settings and choose, yep, the products count. Let's go ahead and change it to six. So it shows all of my products. And instead I'm gonna go back to layout and change this to six or no, let's change it to three. So I've got three columns with my six products right here. And then we can go over here to the sale or stock out badge, which is this badge right here. And you've got some presets to make it look different if you want, which it looks like it's not even gonna change. Let me check and reset too. Yeah, it's not really even gonna do anything. Only other thing I would show you guys is if you wanna go to the style tab, you're gonna be able to change the colors of everything. So if we go to the button styles, I could change the button color and let's have that just match the color of my website. So everything is fluent. We can do the same thing with the sale tab if we want. So let's go to the sale badge and I could change the, let's see, let's change it to blue. Yep. There we go. We could also change the stock or the out of stock badge, but nothing's out of stock right now. And so that's how you can put products updated onto your front page. So now let's close out of Elementor and now we can do our final site through walkthrough. And so now we've got our hero section, scroll on down and here are the featured products that we have and they can click on view products or add to basket immediately. And it's just gonna send them straight to the cart. Scroll on down and we've got the about section, which is about our company our testimonials, which I'm assuming you guys would have already entered in your, your testimonials. And then we have the promo section, which you guys can type out to be whatever you want. 
And then we also have the completed store page with all of our products as well, where people can just click on whatever they want and they can choose the different options that they have and they have access to every product on your website. Congrats on finishing your new e-commerce website. If you haven't gotten started yet, be sure to click on the first link that's down in the description by claiming your free domain name and premium web hosting plan. I'll see you guys in the next video.